What's that? Test, 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 test. Three, two, one. And a pleasant good evening, everyone. And we're coming to you from Brownsville, Texas. It's uh, Coach Joe Rodriguez Field at historical Sam's Memorial Stadium. And it's Friday night football as Brownsville Veterans takes on Corpus Christi Miller. Joe Bowling with me. Alongside is Aaron Sines. And Aaron Sines, here we go. Round four in the RGV. And it's a pretty big deal here at Sam's Stadium tonight. You know, driving to the stadium today, Sines said history made in the Rio Grande Valley. Last time we've had this level of competition here in the Valley not sure maybe that's something you can remember but tell you what the city of browns was pretending like this is the first time ever there's ribbons everywhere there's a lot of fans i had to find this parking spot five blocks away this is exciting for the real grandy valley and i want to make that really clear that it is brownsville veterans memorial here this evening but a lot of the real grandy valley has showed up i saw those fresnos psja i saw sherryland i saw all kinds of shirts jerseys caps RGV is here to support these Chargers tonight. Last time I can remember a round four game having some talent in the RGV was the same time you and I were doing a round game uh, when Harlogen was playing against Warren. And there was a big game going on at, at Memorial Stadium over there in McAllen. That's about the last time I can remember it. This Miller team is loaded for bear. They're taking on this veterans team that Aaron, uh, perhaps it's the true definition of peaking at the right time because something sure flipped mid-season on this Brownsville veterans team and they're a much different football team than what people played early. Well I had the pleasure of watching this team, calling this team as a matter of fact, play about playing Harlingen you know a handful of weeks ago and uh, looking at their schedule and they haven't lost in two months Joe. It's been two months, eight weeks plus that they have not lost a football game and they've been doing so in dominant fashion and so when I saw them in Harlingen you know about a month ago or so and I told you just before the game the confidence was there. They were playing like an older team, mature team. A lot of that has to do with mindset. And I have seen, as you were mentioning, the physicality has really ramped up for them, especially as they headed into these playoffs. And so we, we said, could this, could this be a game of finesse versus physical? And Brownsville veterans being the physical team. And Brownsville veterans definitely took a, a different level of physicality last week when they took off against PSJA North, arguably a huge upset in some eyes. However, some said that wasn't an upset at all. It was just a team that just executed in a big way. One guy that's going to be on the sideline throughout the broadcast is Eric Madera, Eric Alexander on the air. And there's Eric down field level. Eric, you got to call that game last week. Tell me what happened with Brownsville veterans. What was the first indication that they were going to pull that win off last week? That the Veterans Memorial team obviously was winning some games early on, and then all of a sudden a switch flipped. They had to take on a team that was arguably a, a big-time favorite. Eric, again, you look at this one. It's another team that's favored on paper to win this Brownsville Veterans team. However, talk about what this team can do. I really feel that this team right now just needs to come in here and just not allow for the pressure to get to them. They seem very calm and composed. And like you said, 
This Corpus Christi team's coming in here as a favorite. The Brownsville squad, if the team and their fans on their back, I feel they're gonna take that little disrespect and say, hey, it's our home stadium. We're gonna come out here and defend it. You got a team uh, in, in Corpus Christi Miller that can score a bunch of points, Eric. Uh, arguably, they, they, they scored 77 against Martin. They're averaging nearly 60 points a game. Is this the Brownsville veterans kind of team that can outshoot this team if they have to, or do they have to limit possessions and keep this score in the 20s? You know, I think it kind of goes to what the head coach here for Brownsville Vets said beforehand. I was able to get a conversation with them. He said, we got to limit turnovers and not allow for the big plays to really come out here for Corpus Christi Miller. They cannot have the ball in time of possession out too much. We need to keep it ourselves and allow ourselves to dictate this game on our terms and not allow them to really run things rampant. Again, the other thing is that you got a guy going both ways. We saw that last week for Brownsville veterans. I said during our Luke Bruya show that I, I didn't think that necessarily hurts a team like Brownsville veterans because once you get momentum going, once you get that energy flowing, you got guys that stayed on the field and, and no one seemed to be affected by anything at all of playing both ways last week. Eric, do you see that being a factor this week? Not at all. We saw Thrill number one here for Brownsville Vets have a stellar day in all three factions of the game. Had an interception, had two touchdowns, and able to get some big returns on special teams. You look at all the levels. You can look at college with Travis Hunter out there at Colorado Buffaloes. These players are used to it. This is what they want to do on these big stages, and I think they're going to come out here and absolutely thrive on both ends. That's Eric Alexander. He'll be with us on the field level throughout our broadcast, and he's going to give us a new wrinkle down there. Aaron Sines, you got to hear a little bit. He, he was up in the booth calling that game last week. He got to see firsthand what they did to, to PSJA North. And, again, I talked about it that let's take a look. Uh, when the Brownsville veterans' defense is on the field, I've got some statistics here that we're going to break down. When they're on the field and the offense of the Miller Bucks is on there, you're talking about a team that allowed points scored 193 on the season for Brownsville veterans. That's 14.8 points per game. 31 points in one game was the most they allowed. That was against PSJA. That was in a loss. That was early in the season. The Miller Buccaneers offense, if we can get that graphic up on the screen, uh, the Miller Bucks, 778. This is defense by offense by the numbers for Brownsville veterans. Try to get that other graphic up. We'll go back. There it is. 778 points scored by this Miller team. That's nearly 60 points a game. They scored 77 against Martin. When they get rolling, uh, they can score some points. Looking at that, Aaron, I, I said it. If Miller does get in the 50s or 60s, I don't know that Brownsville Veterans has that much firepower to say, let's just outshoot this team. But if Brownsville Veterans scores what they normally do, as we take a look at the next graphic, which is defense for the Miller Buccaneers. As you see this uh, see crowd getting riled up. Now here's the interesting one, Nick. Miller's defense is giving up 22 points a game. They've given up 48 as a high water mark. Four different times they've given up 40 points. So yes, teams get in quote shootouts with them, but this Brownsville veterans team is averaging 40 points a game. If they get near their average points per game and they do it with the type of possessions that Brownsville veterans is used to having, I'm not sure Miller gets the ball enough to score enough points. Well, we talked about that before we started the broadcast, Joe, and you brought up the great point and said, you know, a key factor for Browns Veterans Memorial is long sustained drives, and, and they can score the football. Miller on paper, right, uh, it, the offensive stats just stand out. It's just staggering offensive stats, individual stats. They have three players, Joe, uh, that all each of them have more yards individually than the top yardage earner for Brownsville Vets. So you got three guys. You have Long, Taylor, and Holmes that all are over 1,500 plus yards. Long, the quarterback, throws through for 3,500 plus yards this season. But what you don't see in Miller is the defense. There's not a lot of outstanding defensive stats other than the sack stat. And that's one thing I do want to bring up. Uh, when we look at stats uh, in the sack division, the defensive side, you know, Miller did get to the quarterback th 33 times. And the point that you made in that is that when Miller gets in a in a in a part of the game when they are forcing the other team to have to throw the ball, throw the ball, eliminate the run, that's when they pin their ears and come back. And so really for me, it, it's gonna determine which defense shows up 
and plays lights out is going to determine who controls this ball game. Let's go to our graphic number five, which is the Chargers offense and the key players. And, and you're looking at, the, first of all, let's talk about the quarterback, Montoya. 50 completions and 92 attempts, 1,003 yards. That, there, there's the players to watch. You're looking at 15 touchdowns, just one interception in 92 attempts. They don't throw the ball a lot, but when they do, they're efficient enough to move the football downfield. Let's start right there with the quarterback. A team that comes in and everyone says they run, 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 and then all of a sudden, wait a minute, quarterback's got 1,000 yards. They can throw at times. Sure, and Storm Montoya is one of those players. He looked very calm under pressure uh, when I saw him last. And uh, last week he showed up. Last week he started throwing the ball against PSJ North, and people were saying, "Where's this been all season long?" And my thing is, I've always you know been curious as far as the game plan, the, sh the strategy of coaches. And I always think if you can win with as little as possible in the regular season, win that way, and then unleash what people don't know in the playoffs. And I think right now, Storm Montoya, what we're going to see tonight is that he actually is a good passer and can actually throw the ball downfield. And it just wasn't needed to win games in the regular season. And so I, I'm, it's been exciting to see this Chargers team because it's just continued to evolve week after week. Uh, and so please understand though that the stat numbers, like I was trying to get it earlier, they don't match at all. 1,000 plus yards to, you know, Miller side, 3,500. But it doesn't mean that the ability is not there. And I think Storm Montoya is going to surprise some people tonight. Let's look at that Bucks offensive key players. Uh, that, that would be our, our next slide here. And that's where you're talking, taking a look at the quarterback. It starts there. 307 attempts, 203 completions, 3,500 yards, 56 touchdowns. And the number that got me most, Aaron, is this three interceptions. Uh, in 307 attempts, that's about 1% of the time that the ball is, is picked off. Uh, he's got a, a receiver uh, that's got 881 yards. Another was 737. Another was 658. Uh, he's, he's spread the ball around. He's got also a running game in which Taylor has 2,222 yards. So it's like, are they one-dimensional? No, sir. No, and, and I'm looking at Broderick Taylor, right, and he's a running back. He also comes out of the backfield and catches the ball as well. All-purpose yards for Broderick Taylor is 2,563, 2,563 this season. And so you look at him, and then you go down to Holmes, right? And then now you got Corey Holmes that can catch the ball. He went for 15, 6 years or so this season, all-purpose yards. And, and so this Miller offense is stacked, Joe, and you, you cannot ignore that. Uh, I was looking at an article claiming, you know, Holmes running 4-4. These guys are running sub 4-4, 40s. Um, the film makes it look faster than that. I saw them get behind defenders and then just not look back. Uh, and so I think that that's going to be a test for the Charger defense today, uh, Joe, in, in that secondary specifically. One thing that we haven't talked about as you see the Miller Buccaneers make their way off of the field is the fact that uh, we talked about who we saw uh, that was here watching this game, uh, representation across the Rio Grande Valley. They sold this thing out in less than 24 hours. Uh, let's go back down to Eric on the sidelines. If we can get Eric back on the sidelines. And as we get Eric back with us, Let's go back to Eric and ask him. We talked about what we saw as far as people attending this game. Eric, what's the atmosphere out there with the crowd that is on hand to, uh, to watch this football game? Well, right now the crowd has just been electric to see. Everybody is on their feet. And every, team, every time we see this Brownville vet squad come onto the field, they just erupt, they get going. It's not gonna be a quiet night here in Brownsville, Texas. These fans are ready for some electric football action. On the other side, it looks like Miller brought the entire city of Corpus Christi. <laughs> They're over there, Eric. You can hear that that crowd gets loud really quick. Yeah, yes, they have. And we're talking to the, co the coach for Miller beforehand. I asked him, what's the message to the fans that had driven the distance they had to come out here? He said, give us your energy. Put us on your back. We're going to put on a show for you all here tonight. We just need you all to come out and stand and cheer. Make sure our, our team on the field knows that everybody's here to watch them play some playoff football. Hey, let's talk about the, the, the breakdown on Corpus Christi Miller. We've got the offensive numbers setting here. you got a 2,000-yard rusher. You've got an all-purpose guy with 1,500 yards as well with Holmes. Uh, they're not necessarily a one-dimensional football team, Eric, and that is a different kind of beast to prepare for for this Brownsville Veterans team. It really is, and you know, I was just standing right next to some of these players. They are huge, and when we see teams coming with this size, it's the game is going to be won in the trenches. We're going to have to see how both these lines for both the offense and defense will hold on for both these squads, and 
whoever can find a way to get that early push and make their mark and allow themselves to put some early pressure onto the offense, it could be what changes this ball game and really flips things on its head. 27 minutes before kickoff, Erica, what can they do to, to, to hold back the enthusiasm down there on that field? Oh, right now, I don't think there's anything this team can do to try to sit still. Only thing I can say is close your eyes, try to meditate, but this game, I think the adrenaline's gonna rush and it's gonna run through some of these athletes and we're about to see some of these players have an outstanding night of football. Eric, if you had to circle a couple of keys in this football game, what would you say is some of the biggest keys in this football game for Brownsville veterans first? Brownsville Vets have to find a way to hold on to this and allow for clock possession to be their main aspect. You can't allow Corpus Christi Miller to have too much time with the ball. They're not going to stop themselves from scoring too often. So right now you just have to, to limit the possessional game for them as well as no turnovers. This team's going to be thriving if they get the ball in good position. You have to allow Corpus Christi Miller to earn every single yard they get here tonight. Again, Eric, talk about uh, the size factor because uh, a lot of people were, were kind of uh, – thinking that uh, Brownsville Veterans last week was going to get pushed around by the size of yeah. PSJA North. Uh, and talk about the size factor again. You've seen both teams down there on the field and compare them. You know, I'm, I'm happy you said about PSJA North. I was about to bring that up. The line was absolutely tremendous for the Raiders last week. And that was something that we all said was going to be one of the biggest factors. I go back and talking about how the trenches are going to be won. It's going to be a dirty game in terms of where these players are going to get. Not, they cannot come out here thinking they'll be able to patty kick around. And I really feel that which one of these teams can allow themselves to utilize themselves the most optimally, especially for this O-line. Sometimes you can't get those one-on-one -on -one blocks. You have to find ways to have that second defender with you to help clear up some of those running lanes for yourself and give your quarterback some time to throw. We saw how PSJ North, every time they allowed that pocket to shrink quickly, it allowed for this Brownsville Vets quarterback to kind of get in his head and we got some missed passes. But this is where this squad just needs to put up a big fight, allow for him to at least have three to five seconds back there to at least watch his first and second reads. Miller size on the offensive line, compare that to uh, PSJ North. Uh, do they compare size-wise? <laughs> No, I, I, I don't think so. There, there's a couple players here on this Miller side that I feel are over 250 pounds. And we were looking at Raiders. Everyone there was over six feet, over 200 pounds. But I see about a 6'6 tackle on the side of Miller. If that's what's going going to be the difference, what's holding them up, they're going to be in some good hands as we know that this team coming from Corpus Christi, they have some big boys. They feed them differently over there in Corpus. And this is going to be shown here tonight. But Brownsville, they just have to allow leverage. Yes, you might not have the factor, but you have to get underneath those shoulder pads and allow yourself to get that early push and not allow for the opposition to really get, the, get their way with you. Erica, again, we're, we're 24 minutes before kickoff. We'll, we'll check in with you at the 12-minute mark and, and find out what's happening from there, but enjoy yourself down on the field. Thank you, Jeff. That's Eric uh, Alexander. He's one of my new announcers that came on board, and he's a really good one <laughs> that, that, that's joined us, uh, Aaron Sines. Uh, he brought it up. Now, Miller doesn't look like they have the type of size that Brownsville veterans had to go against, uh, but also we know they don't have the, the speed. Yeah, and I think that's going to be something to watch out for. I was on the field also before the game and trying to kind of gauge, you know, what's out there. And, you know, me being about 6'5 myself, you know, I kind of look at people in the eye. I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a tall guy. I forget how big they are. Um, but, you know, I, I think that sometimes you can talk about the size and you automatically think, well, they're going to win because they're bigger, stronger, heavier, whatever the case may be. Uh, but technique goes a long way. And, you know, you can have a smaller guy that has excellent technique and you can manhandle a heavier, bigger opponent. And so, you know, for me, coaching is, is going to be on display tonight. And one of the things that I've kind of heard and I've read over and over again, uh, right, is how this Brownsville Veterans Memorial uh, coach has, uh, Ramirez has prepared his team. A week after week and, and so you have to remember that technique can always take down size uh you know whenever you have it right and we also have uh, coach down on the field as you can see him right there and uh, i think they prepared something for coach as well uh, down there on the uh, bisd we're, we're in the uh in the booth here at brownsville at sam stadium Oh, and he's, he's, he's been named Coach of the Month. That, that's being recognized right now by the PA announcer. Dr. Jesus Chavez, 
on the Board of Trustees, President Jessica D. Gonzalez, Vice President Daniela Lopez Valdez, Secretary Denise Garza, and Trustees Carlos A. Lisoto, Eddie Garcia, Frank Ortiz, and Minerva. So again, there you see the, uh, the, the head coach being recognized here. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's an honor. Uh, they extend the heartfelt congratulations to J.C. Ramirez, head football coach, Veterans Early College High School. Uh, they recognize him and uh, Coach of the Month, Coach Ramirez's dedication, strategic brilliance, and unvetted commitment to excellence propelled this team to remarkable achievements. Uh, Aaron, they win this one and get to round five. Uh, we're talking about uncharted waters. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's exciting. And, you know, just to be a part of this history, uh, I feel like, again, the Real Grande Valley as a whole is kind of excited uh, because I think people see the, the opportunity for a good game tonight. And I think people see Veterans Memorial because of what this coach has done, because of the program, the school, uh, the city. Um, this is – people feel like there's a chance. There's a chance to get over this hurdle, you know, for Valley teams. And the whole Valley is behind that. Let's turn it over to the PA announcer once again. J.C. Ramirez, head football coach of Veterans Early College High School. And again, on the field, uh, the recognition of the coach. Now they're going to have the uh, introduction of the uh, cheerleaders as well. Uh, we got multiple cameras here uh, with BISD. And, uh, yeah, Aaron, you've had the pleasure of working over at Harlingen uh, throughout the years. Uh, uh, when the school district gets behind these broadcasts and they get these students rolling and, and everyone involved in these press boxes, uh, you get some pretty good quality uh, on the broadcast. Yeah, and I tell you what, you know, and I want for the viewers to understand that there's a lot of student involvement tonight. Uh, throughout this broadcast so these are your future broadcasters your future you know tv and maybe film you know people and uh and so you know applaud them and and just in case there may be a little camera off or something like that understand right that that this there's a lot of students involved in this and this is just preparing them for the future so i love whenever students get involved in these broadcasts 19 minutes before the uh, kickoff for those that are counting welcome to the broadcast again uh, i know you're accustomed to watching these games on various platforms in this case it's bisd uh, and the YouTube channel. So thanks for tuning in wherever you may be. Share the link, pass the word, let the other fans know. I'm Joe Bowling, that's Aaron Ramirez. Uh, we can tell you who we are and, and what we're doing as far as assisting this broadcast. But again, help the other fans that may not know where to go. Uh, I went to great lengths, and when I say I, I, I mean I, went to great lengths to try to find ways for these school districts to get involved in broadcasting these games and to keep it free so that the students could get a, a a realistic view of how to operate cameras under field conditions under live conditions if you will and also the fans could watch it for free without having to go to a pay-per-view and so again i'm proud that we're here to do this uh and, and again like aaron said if you see a, a fumble or two on the camera it's guys and girls that are learning uh, the art of camera operations here uh, at sam stadium again beautiful football facility and historic. Aaron, I heard complaints throughout the week that, you know, oh, it's not big enough or the parking's not going to be good. Well, you know it was a long way to park it and get here, but still, I, I love the environment of Sam Stadium, especially when I look out here and see this place packed to the gills. Yeah, and I walked up on the north end of the, the stadium here, and I noticed these new, brand new stands on wheels, y'all. And so they, they rolled these in on the back of a truck, you know, pulled them in here, backed them up into the field, and so they brought our four extra bleacher sets here um, the parking was, was crazy. 
But it was exciting. I, you know, I don't think people really mind tonight, uh, at least right now, because yeah. the excitement is here. And like, hey, you know what? Whatever we got to do to get in that game, we're going to do that. So uh, it, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And as I'm looking across right now, the field, both sides of the stands, uh, east and west here, are full. Um, we do have a good contingency from Corpus Christi Miller in that purple on that side. Um, but we do also have some Brownsville veterans fans that have filled in on the visitor side as well, Joe, because there's a lot of other Valleyites here on the home side as well. Who is behind this production? I'm going to run them down at the end of the game, but it's also good during a pregame show to give some, uh, some, some name recognition uh, of those that are behind the scenes because uh, I've said it all along. You know, I, I've always been blessed to be the guy holding the microphone to broadcast the game or the guy in front of the camera uh, when it comes to the, uh, the television side of things. Uh, but behind me uh, are the workers. And, and so let's, let's give a shout-out to Ab uh, the students that are involved here. Abigail Gonzalez, uh, also uh, Christopher Galvan, Jessica Cortinas on a camera, Marco Delgado also on a camera, Gail Espinoza operating a camera. Alejandro Lopez on a camera tonight. Coral Rodriguez also on a camera. You're looking at the uh, the technical side of things. The the other guys that are the technical director, Joe Gomez, uh, one of my good friends here in the Rio Grande Valley. Whenever I go to a stadium, I always look for that guy first. And Joe ha has been that guy. <laughs> I'll call him and say, hey, I'm coming. What do you got? And he's like, well, we got this. We got this. So let's try this. And you should have heard the conversations going on to get ready for this one. So, again, Joe Gomez on the technical direction. Alejandro Varesti is the Uresti is uh, on the commercial side. Lorenzo Lopez uh, uh, assisting on a camera. Uh, Alicetas Lopez also on instant replay. Uh, the director, Martin Sandoval uh, in, in the director's seat uh, making sure everything is, is running and we had our first production meeting at 5 o'clock today uh, but we had meetings before that through the emails. Uh, Moises uh, Garza also on a camera tonight and Juan Herta uh, operating a camera. Rudy Zamripa Jr. down on that uh, field level camera and Jammer Ruiz also on the field level camera. Those are a couple of guys uh, with a little company called Rio Sports. I'll tell you about them sometime at another date. But again, that's all the list of people that are behind us, Aaron. All we got to do is put a headset on and talk. <laughs> It's amazing. And, you know, I, I, again, I feel the energy here in the booth. Uh, everybody is excited to be here to do their jobs, but it's bigger than a job. I think there's a lot of belief uh, this evening, right, here in the Valley, and you can just feel it as tangible here in the booth. All people working behind the scenes on, in, on the field, it's just a great environment. Wish you were here, but I'm glad you're watching and joining us online. La last time you and I were, were involved in a huge game featuring – uh, the, the tie is Corpus, okay, yep. uh, because of, uh, you know, we, we were sitting there at Buccaneer Stadium, and it was San Antonio Warren. Sure. That team came in uh, against the Harlingen Cardinals. I can't even give you the year. It's that long 2011. ago. 2011. 11, okay, 2011. Well, let's script that because of the fact that uh, one of the primary reasons why I asked you to be in this broadcast was because of the tie to that, as you see the Chargers uh, getting ready to, to line up uh, for the school songs. But, again, that was similar, Aaron. We had heard about – how prolific the quarterback was for San Antonio Warren and, and what the receivers can do and what their athletes can do and all the speed and all the numbers and all the points they scored. And we also knew a Manny Gomez team that said, we're going to punch you in the mouth, we're going to play physical, and we witnessed uh, a Valley team knocking off one of those speedsters. And I think we got a similar matchup right here. Well, it's exciting. And, you know, the key thing with that game was – Gomez showed up with some surprises. <laughs> and, you know, one of those, I'm going to say Randy Bermea. Randy yeah. Bermea went both ways in that game and special teams, by the way. But he had an interception return. I mean, and, and I'm looking at Gilbert Trio for Veterans Memorial could be that X factor today, right? Uh, that type of game-changing player like Bermea was there against Warren. Uh, Trio could be that for Veterans. And so the wrinkle's going to have to be, right, a surprise that Miller doesn't expect. If you want to have the same kind of outcome that Harlingen had against Warren back in 2011, has a team from Brownsville ever been to Round Five? No, sir. Uh, this is this is a uh, uh, has a Brownsville veterans team ever been to Round Four? No, sir. So it's uncharted weathers uh, for these teams, and you can see there there's the 956 representation <laughs> as you see the fans out there, uh, and those are yes, they're Charger fans, but as Aaron said, they're coming in from across the Rio Grande Valley, and they're all right here at Sam Stadium. Those that couldn't get here are listening to us right now. Yeah, glad you are. And so I see 956, you know, <laughs> signs throughout the stadium here. And, uh, and the Chargers tonight are, are leading the charge, literally, uh, and figuratively for the Rio Grande Valley. And so, again, thanks so much for joining us. So this, this is just an awesome opportunity. Uh, appreciating Joe Bowling. And uh, we're going to have a great game on our hands here in about 12 minutes and 30 
two seconds. Yeah, I promised Eric Madera we would go to him uh, at the 12-minute mark. And so uh, what they're doing is some, some uh, on-field festivities, which will include the uh, playing of the school songs and things like that. So well, we may uh, jump in there with Eric, or we may just uh, roll right into the game and have Eric standing by on the sideline. Again, it's a new wrinkle for a broadcast here at Sam Stadium. Not a new wrinkle for what I've been doing, Aaron. You know, I started this stuff before most of these schools were streaming games. You know that. And so we, we were doing some stuff with some sideline reporters back then and, uh, and graphics and all of that fun stuff. And so Eric down there is going to add a, a new level on this broadcast here tonight. Cheerleaders out there on the middle of the field. 11.45 remaining. Our crew's down there on the field. They, they've got that uh, handheld stabilized camera. They're going to be doing things like getting in with the coin toss, and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have some uh, – we're going to have a pretty good seat. I'm coming off a trip. <laughs> we left at 6 a.m. yesterday morning and landed at AT&T Stadium to watch the Dallas Cowboys, uh, which, which ended up winning that ball game last night. Dahlia went to her first game ever, my wife Dahlia, and so we got to see that. And then I got up at 6 o'clock in the morning and drove – from AT&T Stadium to Sam Stadium. Is the environment the same? I don't know. It's pretty darn <laughs> loud like right it. now. You know, and uh, so uh, I, I'm excited to, to be a part of this. I, I can't tell the BISD people enough. Thank you for, for allowing me to have this seat to broadcast this game. Uh, you know, Sam Stadium was one of the first stadiums that I was able to call games at. So was Bogus up there in Harlingen where you're at. You know, the Rio Grande Valley embraced Joe Bowling when he was like, I really want to announce some games. And they're like, how are you going to do that? How you <laughs> and all of that stuff. And so uh, the evolution of getting here. Let's see if we can turn it over to the PA announcer. And uh, we'll turn us down right now and, and turn it over to him. Do not through any of your actions cause any doubt the value of athletics. We'd ask everyone to please now stand and let's take this time to reflect upon tonight's game and the goodness it has granted to all of us. This game belongs to both teams, the Buccaneers and the Chargers, and to the good sportsmanship that they will show today both on and off the field. We will ask you at this time to join in a moment of silence, hope for a game free of injuries, and for a safe trip home tonight for everyone. Thank you. Please remain standing for the Miller Buccaneers School Song. Again, those of you that are tuning in on the uh, YouTube broadcast of this, we do have the audio piped down. Anytime music's played, anytime uh, anything's going on, especially at halftime, give you a preference to that. If it's licensed, well, because of the fact that we're forced to put this on YouTube, it'll be muted. Uh, I learned first and forehand uh, that uh, if you don't have the licensing, uh, you can get in trouble really fast. So, uh, again, you're going to hear some silence at times, uh, some audience uh, noise coming from the microphone out there. But bear in mind, we're with you right here all the way. Followed now by the Veterans Memorial Chargers School Song.
congrats from Veterans Memorial Early College High School Marine Corps Junior Reserve Officers Training Corps Program. Color Guard, Command Color Guard Commander is Cadet Second Lieutenant Idan Lerma, carrying the Marine Corps Colors Cadet Gunnery Sergeant Carlos Cordero. The right rifle bearer is Cadet Sergeant Andrea Guajardo. The left rifle bearer is Cadet Sergeant Caitlin Erisuriz. Color Guard is under the direction of Sergeant Major Lewis. I'm going to ask you now to please remove your caps and place your hand over your heart for the presentation of our nation's colors and the singing of our national anthem as led by the Veterans Memorial Choral Group Sound Station under the direction of Travis Baldwin. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched, we're so gallantly streaming. And the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof to the night that our flag was still We are back here. I, I'm Joe Bowling, Aaron Signs. We've had the uh, playing of the school songs, the singing of the school songs, the playing of the national anthem. I see three minutes left on the clock, and uh, that means we are getting dangerously close to the kickoff here of this football game. And uh, if the excitement level wasn't at a high peak, it's about to get there, my friend. We have Eric Madera down on the sideline. We'll also check in with him and, uh, and just find out if this thing did indeed ramp up just a bit. Here come the Chargers. Brownsville Veterans Memorial making the way over to the sideline and energy, energy, energy takes over this entire Rio Grande Valley. And on the other side, here come the uh, Miller Buccaneers from Corpus Christi. And yes, there's three sections over there rooting for them, but uh, you can hear it, Aaron. Uh, this is decidedly, if things start happening on the positive side for Brownsville veterans, they can have a huge crowd behind them. I tell you what, this is a home field advantage. And, and uh, I'm telling you again, it's not just Brownsville Veterans Memorial home field advantage. This is the Rio Grande Valley home field advantage. I mean, we had tailgate outside, Joe. We had some fajitas going out there in the parking lot, and the cars are packed for blocks past Sam Stadium, folks. And so it, I want you to understand that that really the, the Chargers have the whole of the Rio Grande Valley behind them, and you can really feel it here in the stadium. Both teams are now out of, out of their tunnels and onto the field. Miller's over there on a knee praying, uh, and Miller on paper, Joe. This is a juggernaut. This is an offensive team that can put points on the board. They have several players at different levels on the field that can make things happen. 
the start of the game is going to determine the momentum, right? And what's going to happen and whether or not Veterans Memorial is going to be able to stay in this early. You see the uh, Chargers captains are lined up, ready to, uh, to make their way out onto the field for the opening coin toss. Jerry Gomez, one of the playmakers on this football team. Storm Montoya stands next to him. Also next to him is uh, Nick Tovar and then one of the linemen. Uh, representing the captains is Matthew Pignon, a senior O-lineman for the uh, Brownsville Veterans Chargers. Meanwhile, on the other side, the uh, Miller Buccaneers ready to go. Coaches want me to pull my rosters down. So we'll, we'll pull it down. Here come the Buccaneers, making their way over across the field. Corey Holmes, also uh, next to him is Trevor Long, and then a couple of linemen. Ryan Cantu, one of the juniors, catch the number on the other one. There he is, uh, the linebackers. That's Donovan Otero. We have an honorary captain, Senator La Mantilla. She's the I'm just here for the referee, that's James McGuire, the umpire, we're in the middle. Y'all shake hands and say what's up. He has a regular coat. Well, you're the visiting team, better if you're the home team. What are you going to call? Tell us. Right. It is. Yeah. You're going to call God. Officiating crew out of Houston, Texas, by the way, those of you that are curious. All right, so Aaron, we'll get to see the uh, veterans offense as the uh, Chargers will receive the opening kickoff. I was curious even there. You win that coin toss. Do you want the ball first if you're either of these teams? Or do you want to see what the defense can do? Well, I, I want to see what the defense can do because Miller, again, on paper, right, it, it's an offensive team. And so, you know, I, as a football fan, I'm like, all right, I know Miller's got this offense. I know that they've got these playmakers. Let's see if Brownsville veterans can get a stop on them in the first drive. But to me, it shows confidence that veteran says, hey, we're going to take the ball, and we can do the same thing. We've got the playmakers. We've got Storm Montoya at quarterback. And, and I like the confidence for, for, for Veterans Memorial. And I'm excited just for this game to get started. It has been a hype train here for the last hour. Ago. <laughs> it's time. Let's go. It is time to get this game going. And I'm excited for you to be able to join us on this broadcast. If you're a Brownsville Veterans and you're wanting to limit possessions, then why not get the ball first and say, let's go on one of those nine-minute yep. drives and uh, three minutes left in the first quarter before we see the Miller offense. That would be scripted. I think they listened to your keys of the game uh, in pregame, Joe, and they said, you know what, let's go with Joe's idea here, and let's have a long, sustained drive, right? Just dump it off, run the ball a little bit, see, get some, some sustained drive, take some time off the clock, but you got to get that football in the end zone. I think key, key for Veterans Memorial right now is to put points on the board. Christian Torres is the uh, junior kicker. He tees the ball up at the 40-yard line for the Miller Buccaneers. They'll be in the white uniforms with the uh, gold and maroon trim here this evening. 12 minutes is on the clock. And we are ready to roll in this round four regional quarterfinal game. This would be a regional semifinal it game. It is, because this top eight get... right now are playing in the stadium 5A Division One. Wow, got to get that under my skin here. Mm -hmm. Kickoff is underway, and welcome to round four. Short kick, this is an onside kick, but it goes out of bounds. And so... Uh, Right there, you saw it, Aaron. Onside <laughs> kick, and that wasn't just a pooch kick. They were trying to get the football. It Senior, Jose Sanchez, running back. Junior, Santiago Sanchez, O-line. Junior, Alvin Trevillian, fullback. Senior, Jezo Garza, center. Senior, Gilbert Trillo, running back. 
Tom Montoya, quarterback. Junior, Rafael Lara, offensive tackle. Senior, Israel Yanez, offensive tackle. Senior, Jerry Gomez, wide receiver. Senior, Matt Pinion, O-line. Senior, Nitor, tight end. All right, now because it was an onside kick that went out of bounds, uh, there was a penalty assessed to that, and so it is going to be Brownsville veterans, short field to operate. First possession of the game, they'll start at the Miller 48-yard line, first and 10. First play is a running play to the right side with some room into the secondary, second level to the 40-yard line and inside there. That is a big confidence booster to start off right there. Number 77 for Brownsville Veterans Memorial, lead blocker Matthew, Matthew Pignon. He just created a gaping hole for that running back to get through, and that is what they're going to have to do. Miller's running with three down linemen, then they got four linebackers, okay, that are shifting around. And so this is where the offensive line for Veterans Memorial is going to have to dominate. Cesar Balavante is on the carry, got eight. Now second down run. This is going to be a quarterback keeper on a nice read. Takes it inside the 30. That's the first down. Chargers move the chains. Storm Montoya, I remember that name. Uh, I tell you what, he is an amazing athlete. We talked about his passing ability, but that it only comes as he builds his foundation as a runner. That time showing a lot of strength, a lot of poise, patience as a runner. Two plays, two carries. First down, 12-yard gain there for the quarterback. Mon Montoya's first carry of the night. Under center on a first down play. Turns, pitches it. Short side of the field. Right side, turned it up the field. Now back across to about the 22. That's good enough for about a six-yard gain, Aaron. Jose Sanchez, number three on the outside, did a great job of sealing off that defensive back. And, and what that did was allowed Trio to get back inside and make a cut. Trio, remember last week, he goes both ways, plays offense and defense. His stamina is going to be important for this Charger team tonight. Gilbert Trio on the uh, first down carry got six. 10.36 to go. First quarter, they'll want to pass. First pass play looking in the end zone. It's going to be picked off by the Bucks in the end zone and a turnover on an interception. Look, Storm Montoya had the right idea. That was just a great play right there by number 13 of Miller. That is Khalil Davis. The Sophomore, Andrew Quintero, defensive tackle. Sophomore, Damian Rodriguez, defensive tackle. Sophomore, Tyson Rios, cornerback. Junior, Edo Spinella, DB. Senior, Jacob Rosas, linebacker. Senior, Matt Maldonado, defensive end. Senior, Miguel Silvera, defensive end. Junior, Max Fernandez, linebacker. Junior, Sergio Sosa, defensive back. Junior, Michael Rodriguez, defensive back. Senior, Jaime Martinez, middle linebacker. After the catch of the 30, after the 32 yard line, First pitch and catch of the evening, and they can go to multiple receivers. This time, they go to Roderick Taylor. Roderick Taylor, we're going to be calling a lot of Roderick Taylor as well this evening. Doing a great job there. I am seeing this veterans defense is very undersized. Right away, they're going to have to use quickness and speed. Second down, or a first down play here. Bounce it on a running play. Spinning, driving, getting out to about the 39-yard line. This coming off the interception for the Miller Buccaneers. Now goes to Broderick Taylor, number 21. Remember, Broderick Taylor has 2,563 all-purpose yards this season. He is their bell cow. Guy gains seven yards on that play. On second down, they'll run it this time. Chargers are there. They'll shut it down. Max Fernandez in there on the tackle, doing a great job. Jaime Martinez, a key tackler for this Brownsville Veterans Memorial defense. He is going to have to show out tonight. He's going to have to play lights out, and he gets there. Great tackle, third down. Third and two coming up for the Miller Buccaneers. 9.36 and counting here in the first quarter of play. Buccaneers, offense, running a pass play. Right side, it's going to be a quick catch. Receiver has nowhere to go. Chargers are there to shut it down. Guess who is number six? Jaime Martinez, the senior linebacker, on the year has had 136 tackles, and he reads that so well. They sent a defensive back deep right away. I mean, watch this on replay, and you didn't catch it, but they sent him back. They're expecting a long pass down field, and so I was like, oh, my gosh, they're going to get this, but Martinez made the play. Fourth down, they'll go for it and run it and not get it. Chargers turn it over on downs. At the bottom of the pile is Jaime Martinez, number six again. He is on every play on that crucial stop for the Browns Veterans Memorial. And they're showing they are undersized on that defensive side of the ball. But they've got quickness, they've got grit, they've got toughness. So in the first couple of minutes of this game, we're four minutes and some change in, or three minutes and some change in, 
We've had a turnover on an interception, and now we have a turnover on downs, and the Chargers are operating with a short field for a second time in this ballgame. And an onside kick that went out of bounds. That's crazy. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> First down play. Chargers going to run it. And room in the secondary to the 25, taking on a tackler, staying on his feet, out of bounds. A nice carry for Alvin Trevenio. I tell you what, Trevion did a great job there. It looked like he was kind of losing his balance. Watch this. He kind of makes a cut, almost falls down, but it keeps his feet, and he's fighting all the way out of bounds, and that is going to be the toughness. We talked about finesse versus physical, and veterans going to have to have that physical tonight. Trevelyan on the carry. First and 10 for the Chargers. Short gain this time, as this time the Buccaneers of uh, Miller. Nothing doing on the carry for Maddox Bond. All right, Stephen Richardson now number 44 of Miller doing a great job. Defensive end on this side, right? And, and so Miller is, is playing a pretty base four-man front now and, and running two defense tackles, two defensive ends. He does a great job there of staying outside and not letting the running back get around him. Gain of a yard, it's second and nine. Chargers running on an option, quarterback going to keep it. Bounces outside, upended as he got down to the 15. That's uh, about four yards short of a first down. Well, Storm Montaigne did a great job faking a lot of people out on the defensive side of the ball, including me. I thought he handed that ball off to his running back, and so I was following the running back, and then Storm Montaigne pops out the other end and does a great job on that run. And, and I tell you what, that, that option, it, you run it that well, you're going to get some big plays off it. Under eight to go here in the first quarter of play. Chargers in a red zone possession with the football at the Miller 17, third down. Got to get it inside the 13 to get a first down. That won't get it there. Now we're going to have an interesting fourth down call coming up. Well, and this time he gave, right? So that last play when he even faked me out, he faked that give to his fullback, and then he kept. This time he gives to the fullback, so the defense is keen. They know. They got well, somebody's in charge of the fullback, somebody's in charge of the running back, somebody's in charge of the quarterback, and so that is just good discipline by that defense. Trevelyan on the carry. Fourth and one for the Chargers. Quick snap. And on it, just a keeper by the quarterback. He surges forward. Looks like he got plenty of room. We'll wait for the indication. But the officials look like they got a first down. Yeah, their version of the brotherly shove there, right? And so uh, I just didn't see a lot of help from the behind. We're going to wait for the white cap. White cap is, still hasn't signaled. Miller is saying turnover on downs. Miller it is. Ball. Looked like he had plenty to get that couple of yards. Nothing doing. Miller Bucks offense gets the ball back. Second time that the Chargers move the ball, we're still scoreless in this football game. And it's exciting, y'all. This is, a, you know, an exciting football game from the very beginning. A lot of back and forth here. I was surprised they didn't measure that one, Joe. But I'm, I'm at an awkward angle here where I really couldn't see that. So maybe you're questioning that as, as well at home. Uh, but really, Whitecap made a good decision. It is Miller football. 7.07 to go in the first quarter. It's Miller with the ball. Trevor Long takes a snap, turns, hands the ball off. They'll run it. This time the Chargers are there. That's a... Gain of maybe one. A lot of speed, all right? Number 21, Miller High School, Roger Taylor. He, they say he runs sub 4440, you know? And I looked at the tape. It, it's real, y'all. So to contain him right now is a big deal. Second down and nine for the Buccaneers. Taylor going to throw. Has time. Waits. A little pressure now. Still directing traffic. Delivers the ball down the sideline. Incomplete. Looking for Corey Holmes. And you know, number 13 for Brownsville Vets did a great job just staying with him downfield. Josh Bettis, he, he's a much shorter defensive back compared to number one, right? And, and so he did a great job of just being present, just mirroring him downfield. He got tried to get a, a breakaway on the scramble drill, but uh, just stayed close enough to where it pinned him right there on that out-of-bounds mark. 6.36 to go here in the first quarter, third and long for the Miller Buccaneers. It's third and nine. Taylor. Takes a look at the defense, takes the snap, drops back, and they blow it dead. Yeah, I think the right tackle there, Joe, he moved, he flinched. He just got up just slightly from his position. He was in a two-point position, and they're going to call that false start right there. First penalty uh, on the offense, second penalty of the game against the Miller Buccaneers. Of course, the first one was an onside kick that went out of bounds. So third and long, and we talked about this. If you know they're passing, you can do some different things defensively. Yeah, if you know they're going to pass the ball, pin your ears back and come strong. Here comes Trevor Long on a third and a 14. Here comes the pressure. Delivers a pass. It's caught. 
and receiver. Yards after the catch. Down the sideline to the 30. Speed to the 40. To the 50-yard line. It's a big conversion on third down. I tell you what, Roger Trailer, I, I, Taylor, I didn't think he was going to get stopped, Joe. Honestly, it, what an angle there, right, to push him out of bounds. But really, he had all grass, right, and all gas, and I didn't think he was going to get stopped. So uh, it is a miracle the veterans stopped him on that play. First catch of the night, and the chains move for the Miller Buccaneers. Three of four in the passing game for 48 yards for Long. Wants to throw again, slings it over the middle this time. Caught right down central. Downing downhill, that's a 13-yard gain for the Buccaneers. They move the chains again. That is a great offensive play call. They call it middle screen, middle of the field, because they know that the Veterans Memorial defense is spread out. They're in cover one, and so they are attacking the weak spot in that field. Ethan Vela on the catch, his first reception of the evening. Three receivers have caught passes thus far in the game for the Buccaneers. 6 4 and counting here in the first quarter. Long to throw again. Goes right back to Vela. Vela. Takes it for a first down as he gets it inside the Brownsville Veterans 25. And this went from third and 14, flipped the field, and suddenly the Miller Buccaneers are, are, are moving this football. And you can see the pace. The pace is picking up, and Veterans Memorial right now is kind of gasping. They're, they're looking for air. Long is ready. Takes it, turns, hands it off. Taylor tripped as he got to the line of scrimmage. Got forward, gained a couple out of that. Could have been tackled for a loss. That kind of gives the Veterans defense a little bit of a breathing space there because really this offensive attack the passing attack in particular has got them on their heels right now so that run play actually aids veterans memorial to catch their breath before this next one nigel glad his first carry credited uh, just to get back to the line of scrimmage that's it it's second and ten taylor hands it off no he's going to throw nice play fake and his receiver falls down incomplete pass with 5 10 remaining in the first quarter now third down and 10 coming up well, Corey Holmes has not had the ball yet tonight. That was the intended receiver. And Corey Holmes is going to run it in and then an out to the corner of that end zone, and he would have had it, Joe, because he sucked the two defenders inside with him. If he wouldn't have fallen, he would have gone to the post, right, to the corner. That would have been wide open. They listed as second and ten for Taylor. Drops back the throw. Waits, delivers over the middle. That's caught down inside the five-yard line for the Buccaneers. Jaden Brown there on the reception and just a crossing pattern. And, you know, the, the Chargers are running with one safety deep. It's cover one. And so if that safety clears out left or right, it leaves the middle of the field open. First and goal for the Miller Buccaneers. We had a red zone possession for Brownsville veterans, came up with nothing. Now the uh, Buccaneers looking to put the first points on the board here this evening. Running play, and uh, they will be stopped short. But it's close to the goal line for the Bucs. Roger Taylor, I, I think at this point, you're not going to stop him. You just have to hope to contain him. And, and right there, I mean, you, that's as close as you can stop him without giving up that touchdown. Five carries, 12 yards on the uh, ground for Taylor. Gets it again, running hard in the end zone. He's there. Touchdown, Miller Buccaneers. Flag. And there's a flag. Wait, hold, well, hold on. So the official that threw the flag also signaled touchdown. So I, I'm guessing it's going to go against the defense. Yeah, offsides. So there's your call. Broderick Taylor takes it to the house. Three-yard carry, touchdown, and it makes it a 6-0 ball game with 4.23 to go in the first quarter. And, and again, Aaron, a third and 14 conversion for a pass completion of better than 40 yards. I'm going to draw them off sides here. Hard count on the extra point, which makes me wonder if they're going to want to go for two points if they're going to get you know half the distance to the goal line. It is a 6-0 game. We're in the first quarter. Well, they just gave us another indication. It was offsides against the Chargers. Kicking team is in for the Buccaneers. Once again, their kicker is Christian Torres. Snap down, kick up, away, and it is good. 7-0 ball game. First quarter. Well, Aaron, we talked about who's going to get on top first. Miller Bucks. First points on the game. Well, and, and it came in a very odd way because both teams have been able to possess the ball a couple times. You know, it's back and forth. It, it wasn't just, you know, 
straight up, charge to get the ball, go down and score, turn over, right? And then Miller gets stopped, and then back to veterans. It, this has been a great game. We've played a lot of football here in the first half of the first quarter. Miller up 7-0 and kicking off. Looking at offensive yards, 141 yards of offense already for the Miller Buccaneers. We're in the first quarter. Brownsville Veterans has had two possessions. Both started on the Miller side of the 50-yard line. Talk about gift wrap opportunities to score early. They were there. Now we saw Miller with an onside kick attempt to start this football game. What will they do here? Kicker tees it up. They'll try it again. Short kick fielded by the Chargers. Dropped. Looks like the uh, Bucks recover it. Number 13 for Brownsville Veterans Memorial, Josh Bettis. He, he called for a fair catch, but he was actually moving towards the football, and he muffs it, Joe. And so that's a live football. That's Corpus Christi Miller football right after they get a score. Yeah, he, he, he ran up. I wasn't sure if he was waving his arm or not, but uh, he definitely tried to advance the football. He did. I think he wanted to pick it up. He wanted to score, and, and really he had a lot of daylight ahead of him. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, a, a, there's, there's a specific – the hand goes above the chest, I believe, and it's going to be called it, – it's dead ball. But he muffed it. He fumbled it, right? And so now Miller gets the ball back, and they're right back in familiar territory. First down play here for the Buccaneers, and Taylor wants to go for it. He's sacked, and down he goes. Max Fernandez with a quarterback sack, doing an excellent job coming on his blind side. Watch him right here. He gets a step in motion, reads the snap perfectly. Nobody touches him and takes him from the blind side. Loss of eight on the play. This coming after an onside kick was recovered by the Miller Buccaneers after they scored the first points of the game. And if ever there were a time that the Chargers were going to look to this defense to stand tall. It would have to be right here. Second down play. Taylor to throw again. Here comes pressure. Tries to get away. Slings the ball forward. That's incomplete. Anybody there? I kind of doubt it. Well, yeah, there was one guy in the vicinity. Looked like Broderick Taylor was close enough. Look, this is the same play opposite side. Watch this. Now they're going to run him free and clear. This time from the strong side, right? That's the, the visual side of the quarterback. But it had the same effect. The only reason why he was able to get the football off was because he saw that blitz coming. It was just too late. And so Veterans is doing a good job here. <laughs> it, it, said, it worked on the left side. Let's run on the right side. And, and great job there by the Veterans defense. Third and 19 for the Buccaneers. Long is ready. Sends a man in motion. Looks to throw. Here comes pressure again. Sets up a screen this time. Chargers trying to cover that. A high tackle. That's... Back there around the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, Mickey Rodriguez, number 21, and I was kind of watching that, anticipating horse collar and or face mask because he did tackle so high, uh, but neither of those happened. He brings him down. That middle screen, that, look, all the big plays, right, have been happening around the middle of that field right now. They're seeing something, and, and Veterans Memorial is going to have to strengthen the middle of that field. Fourth down, and uh, the Buccaneers... Appeared as though they were going to go for it. They had to call a timeout. And so uh, 258 remaining here in the first quarter. I think the Chargers called the timeout. Yeah, they did. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, that middle screen, the second time they ran that, over here they scored on a, mi on a middle slant, all right? I, I think what's happening, they're playing a lot of man. Brownsville, that's gutsy. <laughs> because when you know you have that kind of speed, and you're saying we're going to go mano a mano right now, right? I'm going to put my defender on that receiver, on that running back, and there are – Going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I, impressive. I'm going to tell you right now, especially with the speed that Miller has. But what that does then is you get a couple out routes, right, and then you get that safety cheating over one side. The middle of the field is open. So that middle, middle screen that they're running here, the middle slant that scored for a touchdown, Chargers are hopefully seeing that and saying, hey, we got to do something here. Maybe go cover two, put two safeties in the middle. Always make sure you have one safety valve there in the middle of that field. Give a look, but change it up yep. as, as the snap occurs. Eight of 11 in the passing game for Trevor Long for 133 yards. They also, uh, the Miller Buccaneers have a, a little bit of success on the ground, but not much. It's all through the air. Fourth down and nine. Got to get it to the Brownsville Veterans 44 to be assured of first down. 
Looked like motion there as the back mm. took off. Now here comes a flag. <laughs> Now the punt unit comes out on the field, Joe. You know, I watched an NFL game last night, not a single punt. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I kept saying, you know, Dahlia was there her first game, and I, and I kept, like, trying to break it down. And I was like, you ever seen a football game without a punt? She goes, how many games do you think I've seen? <laughs> I'm like, all right, all right, all right. And so the guy next to me was like, they really haven't punted. I said, no, no one's punted. I, I said, look it up. I looked it up this morning six times in NFL history. Uh, no punts. I watched one you last night. You got to be night. there for one. Yeah. Now you're trying to see another piece of history today. Well, now the Bucks appear to have the punting team on. Doesn't mean they're going to punt. That's right. We've seen two kickoffs, both onside attempts. That's true. Chargers backing off. Punt is away. It's a high, wobbly kick. It'll take a bounce for the Chargers. Buccaneers will down it at the 29. And Brownsville Veterans will have it with 2.48 to go. And Aaron, after... The onside kick, recovery by Miller, I think the Brownsville veteran Charger defense just made a statement. Uh, they had to. If they would, I'm telling you, if they would have gone down the field, scored a second touchdown in that manner, in that fashion, I think Veterans Memorial would have been on their heels. Let's go down to Eric Madera and take a quick view from what's happening on the sideline. Eric Madera, how big was that uh, stand right there by the defense? You know, it's one of the biggest stands that we've seen here tonight. The way this team has been performing, they're stepping up, especially after that onside kick. Now it's time for the offense to come down here. Everyone on this sideline, they optimistic. So you have to love their chances right now trying to get the score. That was an eight-yard gain by Trevelyan. We'll get back to, to Eric Alexander, who is on the sideline giving us reports, and we'll try to get more input from him. There's just been so much happening and, and such a, a fast pace to this game. Second down here for the Chargers. Second and two. Pitch out, that's a fumble. Picked up by the Chargers, they'll recover it. Heavy loss on that play. You know, the Chargers are going with that, that triple option. And you know they're bringing in the wings. Uh, it's a tight formation. They're not spreading out that defense. And so what they're, they're trying to do is get the edges. They're trying to get the freedom, if you will, for the runners on the outside. Uh, and the problem is that Miller's got a lot of speed on the outside. And, and so if they're just going to line up in, in option formation, Miller's going to say, we got you. We're going to contain you. We're going to load the box, and we're going to stop you. Third and long. Looking to throw over the middle. It's going to be incomplete. Looking in the direction of Trio. Also, quarterback took a big hit that time. Montoya down after the pass. No flags on the field. Yeah, Trio was running downfield. He actually didn't know the football was coming to him to the very end. He finally turns his head around. By that time, the football's there. You know, I know crowd wanted pass interference on that from Miller. I, I didn't see it because Trio didn't really even know the ball was going to be there. Uh, and so, you know, you, you're thinking about that offense from the Chargers. Very conservative right now. They're just trying to run the ball down the field. Yeah, fourth down play coming up now. The punting team on. That was a quick three and out. Brownsville Veterans, a team that wanted to uh, take control of the clock, limit possessions of Miller. Going to give it back to this Buccaneer team. Landon Johnson, a senior, back to return this punt. Also another man back with him. Punt is away, and it's a dandy, booming punt back inside the 30. And here comes Ethan Vela on the return. Vela up the middle of the field. Vela hit hard as he got to about the 47, 48-yard line. Yeah, you don't hear about Vela too much, but he is one of the top statistical leaders on this offense, right? He's just a little bit overshadowed by, you know, Taylor and what these other guys are doing. Uh, but, you know, he gets a chance to shine right now, and he does a great job. Open field tackling needs to shore up a little bit. Special teams has been kind of a... a, a Hit or miss for Miller tonight. And that's how the special teams unit pulled off a good one. Minute 17 to go here in the first quarter. And it will be the Miller Buccaneers offense back on the field. Trevor Long. 8 of 11 in the passing game for 133 yards. Hands it off here. It's Taylor. Bounces outside. Falls forward. That's Corey Holmes that time mm -hmm. on the carry. And Holmes will end up getting six. Now, Corey Holmes also, he, he's listed as a wide receiver, but he also carries the football. So, total yards for the season, he's over 1,500, you know, catching and taking out of the backfield. And so, he's also another weapon that Miller has at their disposal. Second down, a five-yard gain, under a minute to go. 
Taylor is ready, or Long hands it off. This is going to be a nothing doing. Great tackle there by number 12, Miguel Silvera. Uh, he's listed here as a senior defensive end and playing on the left side of the field of defense, but he made a tackle on the right side. And that's just going to show you right now that this defensive line is, they're kind of like down linebackers, Joe, because uh, they're, they're really undersized compared to, say, number 74 left guard for Miller, right? But they're just moving up and down that front well, and they're tracking side to side, and that's what they're going to have to do to make tackles. Trevor Long is ready on this third down play. Third and about five and a half. Long, a low snap. Wants to throw, delivers, short pass, incomplete, dropped. Looking for Vela. That was a catchable ball. And Miguel Silvera was there again. And he came on the outside there, and he almost got to the quarterback, almost got home on that quarterback sack. And, you know, what's really impressed me, you know, I was looking at those stats before the game, and I said, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, Veterans Memorial only had throughout the whole season eight sacks on the quarterback, but they are getting after long tonight. And I think that pressure is really disrupting what they want to do in offense. Eight seconds on the clock, fourth and five, and the Miller Bucks inside veteran territory on their side of the 50 bring the punt team out. Punter is also the kicker. That's Christian Torres. He's a junior. Low snap, bounces, picks it up. Better hurry. Just got it away. Takes a Buccaneer roll. Chargers will let it go inside the 10, and that was a gamble and a half there. I'm telling you, special teams for Miller has been hot and cold. They had that early onside kick go out of bounds. The next one field yielded them a muffed you know, return. And then this low snap here, that could be a, a, a crucial point for this team tonight. Into uh, the first quarter, let's go to Eric Madera, who's down on the sideline. Eric, uh, it's been back and forth, but the only points on the board, Miller, uh, your thoughts on the first quarter? And first thought, like you said, it's been back and forth. Both these teams are still trying to struggle for that power dynamic. Miller with those seven points being crucial. I feel if this Charger team were able to get that field goal earlier when they're down on their end, it could be talking about a different ball game in terms of where their headspace is and how they're calling this offense. Brownsville vet, feel confident this offense is about to come down here and try to make some noise. Eric, if I told you they were going to turn it over twice in the first quarter, uh, would you believe me if I said they'd only be down 7-0? You know, that, when you're talking about turnovers, it's one of the most crucial parts of the game. But this is where this defense, understanding the assignment, they're telling that offense, hey, go out there, be aggressive. We're here to hold things and hold the fort down. Eric Alexander on the sideline. We'll talk to him shortly. Well, Aaron Signs, it is first down for the Brownsville Veterans Chargers. If you want to take control of the clock, no better place than to start a drive at your own 10-yard line. First down play here. They'll get it out about the 12 on a carry by Trevelyan. Yeah, Trevelyan doing a great job there. We saw him earlier. It, it, it kind of, when I watch him run, he kind of has a very strong stomp into the ground, right? And it kind of makes him seem like he's going to stumble and fall. But he always moves forward. And so, you know, he's a good, strong running back. I'm curious to see if the Chargers are going to pull out a spread formation at any point, Joe. Chargers out, gained in the first quarter. 147 to 53, 53 yards of total offense for Brownsville veterans in the first quarter of play. Second and eight here, it's Trevelyan. Right side, hit as he got across the 15, thrown backwards. We'll check the forward progress. I think they're going to give him about the 17. That's the younger brother, Trevelyan, right? So we got uh, number 22, Alvin, and number 24, Calvin Trevelyan. Uh, and the sophomore this time gets the call on that run. Second down is short. Uh, you know, this is where they've kind of gone to play action. Uh, this is also where uh, Gilbert Thieu has also been hit hard when he releases that football. So let's see they go back to the play action here to get a first down. Third down. We're just uh, starting here in the second quarter of play. 7 nothing is the score. Miller on top. Chargers up the middle. Last time I thought they had a first down easy. I think they got it here too, but I'll wait for the official to tell me. Well, I tell you what, impressive blocking there by number 88. That's Nick Dovad. He's a senior tight end and he's a big body down there for veterans more you can kind of see him there towering over the rest of the offensive line and he did a great job of lead blocking to get that first down Montoya carries the ball he's got four carries for 23 yards Trevelyan with four carries 26 yards leads the way for the Chargers here in this first half of play first down quarterback gonna keep it and hit as he got across the uh, 25 
quick tackle there for the Buccaneers. Yeah, Delson Cavan is number five, and he is their defensive MVP of this season. Uh, an amazing player. Uh, he has 144 tackles on the season. Really haven't called him yet this, this game. He's been there in the middle. Um, but when you need a play on that Miller defense, it's probably going to be from Delson Cavanis. Second down and uh, call it nine yards to go. Clock running at 9.50 to go here in the second quarter. A lot of men in motion there for the Chargers. Now, no one was set, and so they were just shifting. Now they'll settle down. Play clock is down to six. Quarterback hands it off, first man through, and a good surge. First down for the Chargers. Alvin Trevillian, the fullback, right? And watch this replay here. He's going to take that right-hand side. Great block there by number 77. He takes a hold of that defensive tackle, holds him long enough to get to that second level. And so big block there by number 77 of Brownsville Veterans Memorial, Matthew Pignon. First down for the Chargers. This drive started at their 10. It's now outside their 35 at the 36. Clock running. 9-10 to go here in the uh, second quarter play. Quarterback going to pitch it at the last second. That's covered up nicely as the Buccaneers make the stop. Well, I tell you what, number five, Delson Cavanis, he comes out, he's spying quarterback, and then Theo sees him, right? I'm sorry, Storm Montoya sees him, and then he pitches, and then Cavanis just jumps over the running back. And so he had two guys in his sights, and he was ready to tackle either one. That's a, a, an expert play there from that linebacker. Still gave uh, Trio a gain on that play of a couple of yards. So second and eight for the Chargers. Toya hands it off. Just diving up under the 41 to about the 42-yard line on a carry by Trio. You know, Gilbert Trio had a huge game defensively, offensively last week against PSJ North in that upset, or some may say upset. Some may say they were going to win it anyway. But uh, regardless, <laughs> you, he needs to have some of those pass receptions in this game, Joe. I, I think you've got to let him get downfield and try to – try to. Just, I hope that interception early didn't – make them worry about throwing the ball downfield. Third down and five coming up for the uh, Brownsville Veterans Chargers. This drive started at their 10. Clock running. It's under eight minutes to go here in the second quarter of play. Quarterback fumbles the ball, and the Chargers said they got back on it. Miller saying they got it too. Now Storm Montero was able to fall on top of that ball pretty cleanly. But a loss taking it back. It's fourth down and about seven, and the Chargers immediately bring the punt team on. They took some time off the clock, but just nothing on the scoreboard. Still trailing by a score at 7 nothing. And so now you're looking again at a possibility of an athlete making a play. Ethan Vela back to return the punt. For the Buccaneers, stands inside his 20. Good snap. Kick is away. This is a short kick. Going to take a bounce and go out of bounds at about the 33-yard line of the Miller Buccaneers. That's where they'll take over. With 7.06 to go, here still in the first half. You know, for me, the Chargers have had a lot of opportunities, Joe. Right, a lot of opportunities to uh, capitalize. This defense has created a lot of opportunities for their offense. And you've got to convert. You've got to convert points. I, and, you know, like you said earlier, after the turnovers and all these things, you know, you're still looking at, yes, it's still uh, uh, early in the ball game, but your offense has got to start complementing what this Charger defense has done such a great job of in this first half. First down play for the Buccaneers, Trevor Long. Single back, trips ride receiver on the left-hand side. He looks that way all the way, caught by Vela. Vela. Across the 45 to about the 49, gains 13. And that's the type of thing that's going to get Long back into the game. He's been under pressure. Uh, he's been a little shaky to start off this, this first half. But those quick hits to the slot receiver like Vela is going to get him some confidence. Quick snap, quick handoff, and a, a quick run for about eight yards right down the middle of the field. For Roderick Taylor. Again, you're not going to stop Roderick Taylor. You just have to try to contain him. And I think they've done a good job so far in this first half. But it's a matter of time before someone like Roderick Taylor is going to break open a big one. Six yards on that one. It's second and four. They'll give it to him again. And this time he's in the secondary. Got down to about the 37. That's an 11-yard tote for Taylor. <laughs> he makes 11 yards look effortless, Joe. You know, he's very patient runner. He, he waits for his opportunity, and then he goes. 
Pass play down the right side this time. That's up for grabs and incomplete. I thought there may be a penalty at the line of scrimmage. I think Long thought that there was offside, so he had a free play. Because the first thing he did, he just looked up and just launched it downfield. Now those wondering, at the high school level, you don't have to turn and look for the football. Uh, you can, in essence, face guard uh, when you're defending, which was the case there for the Charger defender. Uh, as you see, Jerry Gomez, one of the wide receivers on the team, turned into the defender there, defending uh, the long bomb. Second and 10 for the Buccaneers. Quarterback pressure, gets rid of the ball. It's overthrown and incomplete. And Trevor Long took a big hit. I'm, he's under pressure, y'all, and he's been sacked one time, but he's been knocked down, I think, two or three times already this evening. Uh, and that's not something he's used to. He's used to being able to have the time there. Uh, but that is a big hats off there to Veterans Memorial defense and the defensive coordinator because he's utilizing his pieces Right, to be able to put pressure on that quarterback. Charger defense, you see them there digging in their heels here. They know it's a obvious passing down on third and ten for Trevor Long and the Biller Buccaneers. Six oh seven to go here in the second quarter. Back to pass, quick slant, an incomplete pass. I'm shocked there wasn't a penalty on that as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you. Number 12, Miguel Silvera, we've called his name a couple times. He came almost unblocked, and I saw a hand on jersey pulling him back, right? And so, and the white, the white cat was right there watching that. But, um, you know, that could have been a clean sack for him as well. Fourth down, we saw a fourth and five and a punt. Now we see a fourth and ten, and the Buccaneers keep the offense on the field. Long wants to throw. Deep drop this time. He's got some time. Waits. Now he just throws it up for grabs and then complete down inside the five. Chargers going to take over on downs. And you can't say, as they head to the sideline, there, there's the excitement, Aaron Sines. This defense, and Coach knows it. They're keeping this football team in the game right now. Their offense has to appreciate that gift, though, Joe. This defense has gotten them out of a few given them opportunities already and this offense has not been able to convert and and what i'm looking at this offense around they're running a very safe very basic option game and i think they got to open up the playbook first down play here for store montoya first man through this time gain just a couple we're under six to go at 545 remaining Look, Miller's allowed to just stack the box. That means that their, their defensive line, their linebackers, and even the safety, right? They got eight guys right there within about a five-by-five five box, five-yard-by-five-yard five yard box. And, and, and so they're not having to do anything different. <laughs> and so you've got to stretch that if you're Brownsville veterans. You've got to do something downfield. Second down and seven after the three-yard carry by Trevelyan, which was his sixth carry for 37 yards on the night. Quarterback pitches this time. On the outside, first down for the Chargers, and more! Down to the 40, down to the 35, to the 32. Calvin Trevelyan, rumble, young man, rumble. The younger brother gets a big break right here, but it looks like it may be coming back. I did see someone triple here. You can see here, right on the edge, right there, and it, I think they're gonna call that. I think he wrapped around the waist and then came down to the legs and tripped him up. Again, we'll go back, uh, see if we can see that replay again. Yeah. Watch where the defenders on the outside edge fall down. And watch the hands. We uh, get a chance to see the replay one more time. Maybe Joe? Yeah, and, and if we could look at that, look, watch the hands of, of you know, the offensive player. Here it comes. All right, watch the last defender out here on the end. 62 engaged in the block. It's right here. Right there, yep receiver yeah. kind of fell back into it. it wasn't 62 that was that was yeah. one of the receivers negates a huge play for Brownsville veterans still second down but now second down and uh, 15 yards to go on the reverse this is going to be trio trio they wanted to get it back to the quarterback the Buccaneers were able to shut that down 
And Trio's able to at least get back to the 30. Still lost a couple. Could have lost a bunch more. You know, the more you play in the backfield, right, and, and the Chargers, meaning that you behind the line of scrimmage, you're playing into the hands of Miller. Miller's got speed. I, I'm going to tell you, I feel like Miller has more speed on the defensive side than the Chargers on the offensive side. And, and so, you know, if, if you let them play there behind the line of scrimmage, you're, you're playing into Miller's hands. You've got, you've got to stretch it downfield. You've got to make a big break. It's going to be about big plays here for this offense. 420 to go here in the third or second quarter. Third down and a bundle. Montoya completes a pass at about the 45. Or is it incomplete? No, it's complete. That's yeah. a first down. Yeah, Gilbert. Well, no, Thiel. short. Short of the first short down, first two down. yards. Yeah. But look at this pass right here. Theo took a big shot. He went high and low on him. Right, I think that the low guy may have been needing the helmet, and so he's going to have to get checked out, folks, hoping that player is okay. So we may have to take an injury timeout here. They're going to attend to the Miller Buccaneer. He's walking off on his own power. That's good. That's, that's what you need, Joe. And get downfield, slants, get three. Of the, he's your big playmaker, right? You've got to get him the football, in, and you've got to get him the football in front of the line of scrimmage, not behind. First completed pass of the ball game for the Chargers. As Montoya was able to connect the trio. I think offense is back on the field, Joe. Looks like for fourth down and three. With 4.01 remaining, they'll start the clock back up as the referee gets them set. There we go, under four to go. Chargers. Montoya under center. Takes a snap, hands it off, bounce it outside. They will get close. We'll wait for the spot. I think they First got down. it. Yeah, they did. 20, 20, I don't know, there's a story, Joe. There's a story for 22. Watch this right here. Look at him. Whenever he gets out, it's almost like as he, he stumbles on that one leg. And, and I'm wondering if he's fighting through some kind of injury. It was enough for the first down. Yep. And it, it's tremendous guts if he's fighting through an injury. You're not seeing a burst of speed, no, which you expect. Not. You see him trying to, try to get his legs going. First down play here for the Chargers, though. That's a fumble, and the Miller Buccaneers are all over it. Big disruption there in the backfield by number 53 for Miller High School. And Donovan Otero, the senior defensive end, just gets in the back. And that's what's happening with this, this option play, right? After you run it so many times, everybody has a man. And Otero does a great job of getting back there. He just went and took out his guy so the, the handoff couldn't be completed. Fumble on the play. Eric Alexander's down on the sideline. And on the uh, after the completion of this next play, we'll go to Eric and get his thoughts as the uh, Miller Buccaneer offense is back on the field and ready to go after the fumble by Brownsville veterans. Trevor Long in the passing game has missed on five of his last six. After starting out hot, he's now nine of 17 in the passing game for 146 yards. But he starts to drive in Brownsville veterans territory here with 319 to go in the second quarter. High snap, handoff, short gain, maybe a yard. Let's go quickly down to Eric Madera on the sideline, of Eric Alexander, and, and ask him, Eric, since on the sideline after that last turnover. You know, the, you, you kind of felt the air kind of sucked out of this side for Brownsville Vets, but this team, they have been resilient throughout it. They know it's going to be a tough ball game where they're going to have to step up to the occasion in a game where ball security is so pivotal. This team just has to continue looking forward and not allow the pass to get to them. Meanwhile, Holmes catches a pass there for 12 yards, and that'll move the chains for the Miller Buccaneers. 2.47 remaining. Clock continues to run here in the second quarter. Looking further ahead, Miller will get the ball to start the second half. They lead 7-0. They'll run it. Just drive forward against some just sliding, easy-going yards, if you will, for Broderick Taylor. Yeah, we haven't seen Broderick Taylor really have to open up except for that one play down the sideline here. But really right now, I think he's just kind of taking what they're giving him. He's getting five, six yards of carry, uh, and that's just propelling the offense forward. Second down and six to go for the Buccaneers. Trevor Long before the snap. They whistle, and the Chargers of Brownsville veterans will take a timeout. 2.15 to go here in the second quarter. It's a 7-0 ball game, Aaron Sines. 
I know the defense has done a lot mm-hmm. as far as keeping this game right where it's at. How important is it they get a stop right here? Well, it's so important. And, and, and honestly, it's a lot to ask of them, right? And, and if they do give up a touchdown here, it's understandable. And so if they get the stop, it's even that more miraculous. And I think that this defense has done above and beyond what they needed to do so far in this first half, giving their, their team the best chance to stay in this game. Really, with the yards that are there, with the turnovers, this should be a, a 35-0 game right now. But because that defense has been playing the way they've been playing, it's a 7-0 game. 192 on the offensive yards for the Miller Buccaneers, 192-90. to 90. And, and again, you factor in a fumble on an onside kick, an interception. A fumble off a pitch play. And and yet it's just a 7-0 game. Miller knocking on the door. Ball outside the 30 at the 33-yard line. It's second and six. Miller has all three of their timeouts remaining here in this first half as well. Trevor Long sends a man out of the mo- out of the backfield. Looks that way all the way. Now up the middle. Nice little screen play and straight down central inside the 15, down to the 10. What a smart play there by the offensive coordinator, Jaden Brown, on that reception. But what they did was they sent number 21, Broderick Trailer, out. So what happens? The safety tracks to the outside. And when the safety tracks to the outside, they hit the middle with a middle slant. And so I'm telling you, Miller has been exposing the middle of this defense. First down play here. Down to around the five-yard line. Yeah, Ethan Bella there. Slot, slant, inside, yards. Second and five. They can still get a first down without getting in the end zone here for this Miller Buccaneer team. Minute 34 to go here in the half. Long hands the ball off and in the end zone. Touchdown, Broderick Taylor. Broderick Taylor has been running in first gear, Joe, really. And he really hasn't had to put in second, third overdrive except for that one play. And you know, that first gear is enough for him just to kind of get through that first and then even second line of defense. Uh, and, you know, at this point, it just kind of feels like Chargers defense has done all they can. And Miller's offense is starting to warm up. Second touchdown of the game, uh, rushing the football for Broderick Taylor. He's got 11 carries, just 39 yards, but two touchdowns. Extra point for the Buccaneers is kick, but there's a penalty flag. Too many offsides again. Chargers came across. The official threw the flag quickly, but Miller Bucks already heading to the sideline. And it will be, there's your call, offsides against the Chargers. Now a minute 25 to go. And I'm going to go back. We talked about, you know, looking back at the history and, you know, RGV teams taking on the speed out of San Antonio, out of Corpus Christi. Aaron, you know, I could count numerous, numerous ball games. Uh, that were decided in the last two minutes of the first half and the first two minutes of the second half. Uh, Danger zone right here with a minute 25 to go. You just gave up a touchdown. That doesn't mean the scoring's over here in the first half. That's true, and you don't want the scoring to happen if you're a Veterans Memorial fan on the side of Miller, right? And so, you know, Veterans Memorial would it probably behoove them, right, to protect the football right now and at the very least go into the locker room with a 14 zero deficit and come back fighting in that second half and make some adjustments. Miller um, with all three timeouts left. Expect an onside kick right here. And that offense is warming up right now. Yep, expect an onside kick. Uh, we've already seen a couple. Seen two. <laughs> Miller at 50% on recovering on the onside kick. Ball teed up at the 40-yard line with a minute 25 to go. Here it is. Wow. A short kick. It's going to bounce and go out of bounds. That's the most onside kicks I've seen in one game, Joe. Three. Three. For the same team, by the way. <laughs> but this is going to give Veteran Morales excellent field position. Minute 25 to go. One timeout left. Brownsville Veterans down 14 nothing. Is this one where you say let's play with nothing to lose and try to score here on this drive? I think you got to throw down the field. I think what Trio did on that last one, that out pattern, Those are the types of plays that you're going to have to start putting together if you're going to challenge this Miller defense. And I think you're in a position right now where two, three strikes down the field could get you in in striking distance. First down play coming up for the Chargers. Montoya just one of three in the passing game for 13 yards through the air. 
Hands it off here. That's going to be uh, Trevelyan. He'll gain a couple, and now we'll see if Miller's going to try to use those timeouts. Right now, clock running. With a minute 12 remaining here in the first half. Doesn't look like the Buccaneers mm -hmm. want the ball back one more time. And with 26 on the play clock, Chargers can wait a long time here before taking the snap on the second down play. Montoya is under center ready. Takes it, turns, going to keep it, pitch it. Nothing there for Trio. Makes something out of it. Gets out of bounds. Gain just about a yard, though. You've got to get through the ball ahead of the line of scrimmage. You know, I've said this a couple drives ago. He's got speed. He's a playmaker. But when you give him the ball behind that line of scrimmage, that allows the speed of Miller to get upfield, contain him, and even push him out to the sideline, right? And so, I, you know, if you're Browns with veterans, it's very conservative play calling right now here. And because you want to protect the football, you'd rather go into the locker room 14-0 than 21. But, you know, Storm Montoya showed he can throw the ball downfield, and I think Charter fans may want to see that. Third down and seven for the Chargers. Montoya under center. Trevelyan got near first down yardage. Don't think he made it. They're going to spot it just short. And so fourth down. And now the Chargers will take a timeout. Fourth and one coming up. Interesting call for Brownsville veterans. <laughs> and again, I, I go back to games I called in the Dome, games I called in the Coastal Bend. It always seemed like there was this two or three minute span. And this is where you just, you feel this is where games have been lost. Right, right. A touchdown, 49 seconds doesn't seem like a lot, but with athletes all over the field. Sure, it's possible. You don't get a first down here. A quick touchdown, second half starts. Miller has the football. This could go from 14 to 28 before Brownsville Veterans touches the football again. This is crucial right here. You know, I, I, they're going to go for it. Uh, you know, I, I go play action, then go to number 88, Nick Dovad. You got a big body tight end in there. He can get past that the linebacker crew. You've got, you need a first down here, and you got to go downfield. Tovar, Jerry Gomez have been quiet thus far here in this game. And it's not like Brownsville veterans can't throw the football. They can. They race up to the line, turn, pitch it out, run it left. That's a first down and more. Across the 35, down to the 30 to about the 28. Well, I tell you what, Coach A.C. Amina just said, you know what, we're going to go old school, and they're going again. Trio with his best carry. Watch this. I know they're going to replay that, that last play, but that was goal line style right there, right? <laughs> I mean, they put everybody up on the line. They went quick, uh, and they just – it was all block. Everybody is a lineman, basically, and just a great job of getting a big push. Clock stopped. <clears throat> Second down now for the Chargers. Montoya under center. Gonna throw, has time, no hit, ball comes loose, picked up by the Buccaneers, and tackled at the 45. Joe, when you talked about scoring in the last couple minutes of the first half into the second, you didn't talk about it on the defensive side of the ball, right? And that's what almost what we had right there, and just Ooh. great pressure there by Corpus Christi Miller. And we've been talking about it and saying, throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. Well, Miller was in the backfield fast. And check this replay out here. He goes up, sets up, and then from behind right there, just gets a nice strip sack and uh, looks like the ball is fumbled. And that's Corpus Christi Miller football. Third fumble of the first half and an interception for Brownsville veterans. 25 seconds remaining here in the half, and the Buccaneer offense is back on the field. Trevor Long drops back to throw. Slings a pass that's caught by Holmes. Corey Holmes is wrapped up and taken down. Good strong tackle there by the Chargers. Yeah, Pineda there, the junior defensive back. He would not let go of that ankle because uh, if he did let go, he was going to be gone. 13 of 21 passing for Long. Buccaneers take a timeout with 17 seconds left here in the first half. And, no. Here's where at least you can hang your hat on the Brownsville veteran side of saying when Long drops back on a deep route kind of pass play, 
we've been able to apply pressure. Right. you got to protect that middle of the field, though, which has been open. Second down and nine is the call after the one-yard catch. For Corey Holmes, that's just his second catch in the first half. Ethan Vela's been the guy with five catches and 45 yards. Long sets him down. Second and nine. Steps up. Has a lot of time. Now waits, delivers. That's going to be tipped and nearly intercepted. Yeah, 21, Mickey Rodriguez had his hand on that football, and if he was just about two inches up higher in the air, he would, put up, would have had an interception, but great play stop right there for this Browns. Winner. They cannot give up another touchdown here at the end of the first half. No, nine seconds to go in the half. It's third and nine. Trevor Long now 13 of 22 for 189. Brownsville veterans with just over 100 yards of offense. Miller with 227 running play here. They went conservative and Taylor on the carry got seven and that'll do it for the first half. Halftime has arrived here at Sam Stadium. And let's take it down to Eric, Eric Alexander on the sideline and, and get some thoughts here of the first half. Eric, they head to the sideline, and Brownsville veterans got to be feeling like they just dodged a big bullet. You know, the, the way this team's been able to step up, especially on the defensive side, they're all focused and ready. They need to be able to come in here after this break, be able to come in, focus, and allow themselves to not put their head down. We saw that coaches here telling them on the bench, hey, you guys are still in this ball game. It's extremely close. There's no need for you guys to feel that you're not in this one, but it's going to take a big challenge here for them to really try to turn things around. Again, it's a 14-0 ball game. Uh, things that you saw last week, Brownsville veterans succeeding at, um, what's being taken away here as you see it? You know, we haven't seen Thrill uh, play too much, number one here. He hasn't had those dynamic plays the way he was able to last week. And the, the, the ability to really contain him and not allow him to really start running rampant is something that Miller has been doing phenomenally throughout this matchup. Miller will get the ball to start the second half. So if you're in the halftime locker room, we'll discuss it up here. But, but what are you saying on the Brownsville veteran side uh, that the first couple of minutes of the second half has got to produce? Uh, you said it, produce, but compete, compete, compete. This team needs to continue putting their nose to the grindstone and grinding this game out. They knew it was going to be a tough one. No one was going to give them a victory. This is where they have to take it here on their home field. That's Eric Alexander. We'll talk with him in a minute. The bands are going to perform. The dancers are going to perform. Again, those on YouTube, uh, you're not going to be able to hear it because of the fact that there's licensing issues uh, anytime music is playing. And so uh, Aaron Sines will kind of sit back and, and watch the bands and the performances, and then we'll talk a little bit uh, about the first half, and uh, we'll dissect uh, what's going to have to happen in the second half. Continue watching here on the BISD YouTube channel. I'm Joe Bowling. And that's Aaron Sines.
We, we, we got our side recorded, boys. Uh, again, Brownsville Veterans is the, the first team to make their way back out. Miller joins them right there in sync. And, uh, man, I, I, just, I just look at the, the first possession of the second half, and I think you can – it's kind of like the coin toss to start the ball game. Uh, that decides who gets the ball. I think the first possession of the second half could decide who wins this football game. It, it really could. It, it could be one of those where you kind of just keep moving forward and never look back. And it, it's for, especially for this Miller squad, they don't need anything to get up for this game. They're already excited. They're already going and knowing that they can come out and put themselves that much further in front of the race. I, I see them just continue trying to keep their head up and trying to push Brownsville Vets down. Miller, last time they were in the semifinals, I was born. 1963. Last time Miller was here playing a football game against a Brownsville team was 1969. Brownsville won that game. Uh, they were smaller schools then, uh, and uh, it, it was a different uh, setup the way the UIL had worked. Uh, but uh, there is some history uh, to be made here. But uh, Miller trying to get back. They won a state championship. That was in the early 60s. Uh, they did get to the semifinals, though, in 1963, and they're trying to get there again. Brownsville veterans trying to get there uh, for a first time ever for a Brownsville school. And, and in the ever category, I know we have a state champion down here in the RGV, and that's Donnie. You never want to take away from that. But we've never had a 5 or 6A team make it to the semifinals. That's how big this game is. I'm happy you, you brought that up. I was able to talk to some of the fans on the sideline when I was down there, and I asked them, what does this mean to this community? They said, it's historical. We're out here. We don't know what to expect. We're just happy that our fans get to have this type of interaction, and we're talking about how the community is going to erupt if they come down and win this game. I think pandemonium, the, the, I think the, the goalposts might come down. You might see them <laughs> in the Rio Grande River later here tonight, but <laughs> it, is this one, kind of one of those games for Brownsville for the entire RGV? It's going to be a huge momentum if they can just find some Something to hang their hat on. You know, the year that, that Harlan should beat Warren, I'm going to go back to that because, again, that, that to me, uh, that was one of the bigger games that I witnessed uh, of a victory uh, of a Rio Grande Valley team. And, I, and it goes back to 2011. It took that long, a dozen years, to get back to a, a game of this level. Uh, but had they, had they won the next one, and, and they were up against it, but they, it was a winnable football game uh, if all the, all the stars lined up. Um, that was the last chance that we looked at a Rio Grande Valley team and said, we can get to round five. Now, this year, a lot of eyes looked at PSJ North early on yes. mm -hmm. and said, you know what? 22 returning starters, all that beef up front, all that experience, all that talent. Um, we might have a round five team. Mm -hmm. Well, we're a half away. <laughs> we're still saying we could have a round five team out of the RGV. It all rests on these Brownsville veterans team. I'll tell you what, this is the closest that anybody's been in a while, right? And to be down 14-0, uh, remember, look, look at Miller. They started off the playoffs against Martin. They scored 77 points. Against Edward McGrath, 49. Against Victoria West, 51. So to be 14-0, it's close. It's mm -hmm. still tangible. Brownsville Veterans Memorial, the RGV can still feel it right now. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Both of you, this drive right here could determine the rest of the game. As the Miller Buccaneers make their way back out, the Chargers make their way back over to their tunnel, and they'll run out. We got a minute 24 to go. Again, Eric, uh, did the did the atmosphere of this thing change much uh, after the points scored, or could you still feel the energy uh, right there behind those Chargers? I still feel the energy. I don't think this team's going to put their head down, especially here at home. I'm just looking for them to find some confidence for themselves, and it's all going to be decided. On this first drive, if they're going to stay in this, I, I feel we're going to see a lot of where this this next half of football goes by seeing how Miller comes out and this defense can come out and get a big stop because we know for the first half of football, you're trying to dip your big toe into the water, see what you can do as the boys in red coming out of their tunnel ready to represent the Rio Grande Valley. They are ready and they are pumped up. Hey, Aaron, I didn't throw this out there. Would you dare kick an onside kick if you're Brownsville veterans? I was just thinking about it. I was going to throw it out there and said, hey, we've seen a couple onside from the Miller side. Why not Brownsville veterans? Let's just tack on three in one game. Let's make it four. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but if you have the confidence in your defense, right, talking plainly, you have the confidence in your defense and say, well, you know what? We'll give them a short field. We, we have confidence that we can stop them. So I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility. That would just blow the roof. There is no roof here. It would blow, it would blow the, the, the sky limit off of this thing. 
Uh, they had an early uh, flyby that they were uh, they had scheduled here. The the conditions uh, they, they took that away, but they really went all out uh, to be ready for this football game. By the way, and again, congratulations to uh, BISD School District for putting this together, uh, for managing everything. I, I I talked to Gilbert Leal about it. You know, there there's a parking area over there on the south side that they were working on, and, and uh, the entire entrance is going to be uh, totally changed. Uh, before next year and I remember in preseason I was here and I was like okay coach so when is that going to be finished he's like if all goes well it'll be ready by the first year Eric Alexander makes his way back down to the sideline that's my all-star right he's there awesome man. Aaron Sines. Awesome. He, he great is, meeting you bud he's coming up the ranks but anyway and I talked to him preseason I was like so when is that going to be finished he goes if all goes right yeah. we, we should have it ready by the first of the year but you know how things go with construction so it may be a little later than that well, I talked to him Wednesday. I was like, don't you wish they would have been earlier? He's like, we would have had a, a lot more to show here. But uh, this stadium, uh, certainly, uh, I, I like the setting. I, I like everything that's been done here. And, again, appreciation to BISD for what they put together here in this broadcast. And the place to broadcast the game, the awesome. space we've got here, buddy. Love it. <laughs> Love here. it. Love it. Chargers tee it up. And this second half is ready to begin. A trip to round five on the line between Miller and Brownsville veterans. Officials are ready. And the kick is a short kick. It's going to be fielded at the 20. They'll fake a reverse out of that and bring it up the middle of the field. And look out here. And the Miller Bucks may turn this into a touchdown on a kick return to the house. Touchdown. Corey Holmes for the Miller Buccaneers returns it and takes it to the house. And I told you, this kick right here, very interesting because they were actually playing for that onside kick, Joe, that we talked about. And then there was a huge gap between the front two lines and then the back line returners. And they kind of kicked it right in that gap. So a lot of them catch that ball moving forward with momentum already. And then he faked the handoff here and then just took it to the house. I mean, wow. About a 72-74 yard return for a touchdown there. And it took 12 seconds to add six points for the Miller Buccaneer, and the extra point is away and good. And it's 21 to nothing. Well, we talked about it all halftime. What could the Chargers do if they fall in a 21-point hole? It happened. It happened quick, Aaron. Quick enough that you can respond because you, you, you were looking at having to recover from a 21-point deficit anyway. Now you do. Well, now you do. And, and I guess technically you still have the whole second half to come back. But, you know, we're kind of debating that over halftime and saying, like, well, at what point do the Chargers say we've got to open up this offensive playbook and we've got to take risks, right? We have to, to chance things downfield, get the ball moving downfield. And we kind of came to the agreement and says, well, they go down 21-0, that playbook's going to have to open up because you can't keep running the option expecting to come back in this game. And so – we might just see that Charger offense open up as it did last week against PSA North. Kickoff time coming up for the Miller Buccaneers. And uh, hold on to your hats here. They have attempted more onside kicks than not in this football game. And uh, scoring in that fashion on a kick return for a touchdown, do not put it out of the realm that they could indeed look to do that again, go for an onside kick. They recovered one already here in this football game. Leading 21-0. Second kickoff of the second half in 12 seconds is away. This is a deeper kick, returnable for the Chargers. Fumbled. They'll now pick it up and now drop it again. Now that's a loose ball out across the 15-yard line, and we'll wait and see who recovered that. Collective gasp in the stadium here from the veteran side, man. And that was a close one. Reminiscent of that earlier onside muffed kickoff, right? And again, number three there trying to track that one, Jose Sanchez. Uh, and thank you for Veterans Memorial fans. They he fell on top of it and got the ball back. Chargers do have it. And so now their offense can make their way out onto the football field. First possession of the second half for the Chargers. And we talked about uh, there becomes a time in which you look to do things outside of your comfort zone on the offensive end. They'll pitch it here, bounce it outside, get to the 20. That's good enough for a five-yard gain. 
Yeah, Gilbert Trio there on the outside, and that's a playmaker. And we talked about how do you get the ball into his hands ahead of that line of scrimmage, right? And uh, he definitely has electric speed at, in his capabilities. Um, number 10, they're trying to get a block on the outside for Jerry Gomez, who I'd like to see them throw the ball to, Jerry Gomez. Um, but they're trying to get a block, couldn't quite seal out the defense back, or three would have been gone for a long Down one. Down an eight-yard gain out of that, so uh, a good spot there. Second and two for the Chargers for Montoya. Back in quarterback, going to keep it, pitch it outside. This is going to be Trio again. He's got a first down as he takes it out across the 30. Well, Trio looks like he wants to explode for a touchdown. I mean, he, those legs are pumping. He looks like he's angry. He, he wants an angry run right now. He wants to get downfield. He wants to get some points on the board for his team. And so I, I agree with going to that well right now with Trio, your playmaker, playmaker, because he's got that attitude that you need. He's one of the seniors on this football team playing here with his back against the wall on what remains of his high school career. First down play here for the Chargers. First man through, he's got some room. Takes it out across the 35 to about the 37 yard line. That's Trevelyan's first carry of the second half. Yeah, and again, I think he's nursing a, an injury. I've said that a couple times, but it has not really slowed him down as far as first contact. Now, once he gets to first contact, that's usually the last contact, but he does a good job of getting through that hole and just kind of powering through whatever it is that he's dealing with. He got five yards there. He's got 10 carries for 55 yards unofficially here in this ball game. Second and five for the Chargers. Two men in motion. Here comes penalties on this. They're going to blow it dead. Montoya carries it. They didn't blow it dead. They should have. So regardless of the gain there, this one's coming back. Yeah, Montoya finally getting some light there, right? And, you know, he hasn't really been able to get out and, and make a big play happen too much. Uh, you know, he's kind of limping as well. You know, he took that big shot early in the first half. And so, you know, you kind of have this question right now, Joe, right? Like with the Chargers, what's left in the tank? I, I feel like last week was there kind of like put it on the table. We're going to go and upset this PSG North team. Now you're dealing with what's left in the tank. It's still impressive because it's 21-0, but what do they have left? Five-yard penalty. Chargers now facing second and long at second and 10. Ball at their 33. First possession of the second half for the Chargers. If you weren't with us at the start of the second half, kickoff was returned for a touchdown. Keeper here by Montoya. He'll take it. Got that five yards back. But now it's third and five coming up for Brownsville veterans. Yeah, Montoya there, I, I feel like he desperately wants to make something happen. You know, I, he's taking the team on his shoulders right now. Uh, he's trying. He's a junior quarterback, a big stage right now. He hasn't shrunk from it, but I feel like he's waiting for his moment. Got seven yards on that, so it's third and three. Clock running with 9.15 to go in the third quarter. Oh, they got the air conditioning on in mm -hmm. here. Cool down quickly. Third down and three for the Chargers. Pitch short side of the field. That's across the 40. First down across the 45. Midfield. That's Trio again. I tell you, Trio is running on pure emotion right now. His physical skill obviously is there. But, I mean, look at this. He takes on the outside there, gets the edge. Great blocking. Clean blocking, by the way. And he should have been tackled four yards back. But he dives forward to get every inch that he can for his team. First down play. Chargers now in Miller territory. They've been here a couple of times. They've had a red zone possession in this football game. Despite the fact they have nothing on the scoreboard as far as points. Trevelyan this time. Sliced through. Ends up gaining eight. And Aaron, how close was he to breaking that? Uh, he was. I mean, it, it, you know. It's amazing. You know, again, you're talking about grit right now, determination. You're talking about pure emotion that some of these guys are running on. I feel like really Trevelyan right now is running on, on, on pure emotion. I mean, these guys want it, Joe, and, and you can see that on the field. Second and two coming up for the Chargers of Brownsville veterans. Down 21 nothing From the 41-yard line, Montoya pitches out. Trio this time, nowhere to go. Yeah, great job there by number 22, Donovan Christen, the defensive back junior uh, for the Buccaneers. And, you know, he, he just did a great job because he was anticipating the pitch and he just stayed home. If you over-anticipate, if you try to be too aggressive on the option, uh, the guy's going to get right by you. And so great job there on the outside. And, and this Miller team is doing a good job containing that option. Surprisingly, the Chargers have made a pretty good drive out of it. Third and four for Montoya. Takes a look, settles him down. 
Going to keep it, get a first down and across the 35 to about the 33. Chains move again. Yeah, this offense needs Storm on throw at number seven to have some more bursts like that. They need him to kind of shoulder the offense right now, get that spark for this offense uh, so that way they can get some anticipation. Watch this replay here. He just follows his blocker very wise, very smart, and he just chips away on the inside of that defense. First down play here for the Chargers. 7-10 to go here in the third quarter of play. Going to throw, looking, right side. Man, there, it's incomplete. That, that was set up. was there. Trio, he had a step. I mean, it was a beautifully called play. He was kind of skirting on the outside. One more step, and he would have caught that in momentum, right, with momentum, and he would have gone straight for the end zone. I mean, it was there. The play call was right. The execution was just a tiny bit off. Second and 10, 7.03 to go. Here in the third. Montoya with a receiver to the right side this time. Going to pitch it. It's going to be Trio. Trio tries to get to the outside. Hit, thrown down. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of two. Look, Donovan Christen, a defensive back on the outside, on the strong side of the field, he's got this option red. It's down. Stop running that side, right? He is doing a great job of just breaking down, keeping contained, and he's not allowing anybody to get outside of him. And so uh, the option run on that strong side of the field, he is there every time. That's how big that incomplete pass was as well. Not only was it a chance to score points, but because it was incomplete, it became second and long. Now it's third and even longer after the loss. It's third and 12 for the Chargers and Montoya. Under center. This time the Miller Buccaneers are able to shut down Trio on the carry. May have gained two, but it's fourth and ten coming up. Yeah, Delson Cavan is there, that standout linebacker for these Buccaneers and does a great job of just kind of sliding down the line of scrimmage. And, you know, this option, right, they've been going option right, option left, option right, option left. And sometimes they'll break one up the middle when he doesn't go to his primary options. And so, you know, it's, it's got some wrinkles to it, but pretty much, Joe, if they're playing discipline, Miller – they're going to be stopping this option run. They've got to break out from it. Fourth and 12 to get a first down. Football has to get inside. Well, to the 23 of Miller will assure you a first down for Brownsville veterans. Montoya drops back to throw. Gets rid of it. Got a man. Caught. First down and more. Chargers convert on fourth down. Number 10, Jerry Gomez, right? Senior wide receiver. I've seen this guy. Watch this on the replay. It's an out route timing pattern. He turns his head. The ball is right on the money. And then he gets some more yak, some yards after catch. You've got to go to this senior receiver. You've got to give him a chance to make some plays. Chargers uh, in a red zone possession. Second time they've been here in the ball game. Montoya hands it off as Trevelyan. He'll gain what, a good four. Well, clock running, Aaron. It's, uh, this is one of those drives that uh, Brownsville Veterans has been waiting to put together mm -hmm. in which you keep Miller off the field. And if it weren't coming off the tail end of a return kickoff for a touchdown, this place would be going Oh, yeah. bonkers below us right now crowd still kind of antsy waiting it's going to take a touchdown right here second down for the chargers quick pitch it's trio trio got a block Inside the 10, down to the 5, down to the 3. First and goal coming up, Brownsville veterans. Delson Cavanaugh saves a touchdown there, but Trio would not be denied. He wanted that touchdown so bad. Watch him here. Cavanaugh comes across, and he gets his mitts on him right there his, and makes that tackle. If it wasn't for Cavanaugh, that would have been a touchdown. First and goal coming up for Brownsville veterans. Fans on the home side on their feet. Here at Sam Stadium. First down play, Montoya on a read, keeps it. Montoya, touchdown, Chargers. Touchdown, Montoya. Watch this replay here. Confidence. Cavanis gets an arm wrapped around him, but it's not enough to pull down the strong quarterback. And he calls his own number. After calling the crowd to calm down, he says, I got this one. And he punches one in for a touchdown. That was an impressive drive. First time touching the ball in the second half. Took 
nearly eight minutes off the clock and put it in the end zone for the touchdown. Extra point coming up for the Chargers is away. And it is good. 21-7. We're back to that 14-point separation. All that's been done, Aaron's 12, 12 minutes are gone and two touchdowns later. I tell you what, you know, that big kickoff return, the hat's off there, right, to uh, Miller because that really changed the dynamic of the second half. Uh, Corey Holmes there breaking one open because you remove that, obviously, then it would have been 14-7. And so, you know, it still feels like a 14-7 ball game, even though it's 21-7 because of that one flash play. And so now you're, you're Miller, you, you know that you, you can score on special teams. You put two touchdowns, but this is your time to really kind of go for the juggler, if you will. If you're a Browns offense, this is your chance to get a stop. Eric Alexander is down on the sidelines. Let's get a quick uh, thought from Eric, uh, who was uh, down there with a good view of that touchdown to play by Montoya. Eric. And Joe, that touchdown, this is what this stadium needed. Everybody on this sideline was rooting from that throughout that entire drive, and for them to actually hit pay dirt, that's going to lift the spirits. But now this defense needs to come out here, make a big stop. This game's not over, but it's pointing in the right direction for the Brownsville veteran squad. Thank you, Eric. Again, here we go with a kickoff. Chargers tried with a short kick last time. It turned into a long return. They'll kick it here. Another short kickoff. It's going to be fielded by the Buccaneers. They'll take a knee at the 32-yard line. 4-17 remaining. Well, we saw the defense make some stops, some, uh, some three and outs. We saw a couple of punts by the Miller Buccaneers. And now the Chargers are going to have to, to come up with some more magic. All right, defense has been called on a lot tonight for the Chargers. Miller, I, you know, I said this during halftime, and we didn't get to have not been able to see them here in the second half, right, because of that, that special teams play. But Miller felt really like they were warming up that offense there at the end of the first half. Here come the Buccaneers. They've outgained the Chargers uh, just 234 to 203. Talk more about that in a minute. Trevor Long is ready on first down, wants to throw. Slings a pass. It's going to be caught by Corey Holmes. He's quickly hit. Short gain, big hit that time by the Chargers. Yeah, big hit, but it was after five yards. And just that, as easy, he was just able to dump it as a receiver. And they're giving a lot of cushion to those receivers. And so those five to six yard pass completions are going to be open. Trevor Long, uh, 14 of 23 in the passing game. Penalty flag there. That looks like that's against Miller. It is. Look, th these penalties right here, I'm going to say they're due to the crowd, Joe, because this crowd is alive. It is loud right now. This side of the stadium specifically, I mean, it's right here in the year of Trevor Long. They are on their feet here at Sam Stadium trying to make some more noise as well. Under four to go here in the third quarter of play. Trevor Long is ready on this play. Going to throw again. He's got a man this time. It's caught. Yards after the catch, man, it looked like a textbook hold out there, but no call, and that is going to be close to first down yardage on a catch by Ethan Vela. Yeah, and Vela, the slot receiver, and he's been getting a lot of play because for whatever reason, right, and it's the Brownsville defensive plan, they're not able to get to their big-time receiver, so Ethan Vela's been playing from that slot, and he's been getting a lot of action there in the middle of the field. Six catch for 53 yards for Vela. High snap, long catches it, hands it off, bouncing off a tackler as Broderick Taylor. That outside the uh, 50 to about the 48 yard line. That's another eight yards. And again, uh, he never shifted into that second gear, did he? He doesn't. And you know, it's really impressive because he still picks up seven, eight yards. And you know, I'd like to see him open it up, right? And just you run down the sideline like we did earlier in the game. But you know, he's kind of in that first gear and it's enough to get him almost first down yardage every time he touches the ball. Got out of bounds after a seven yard game. Second and three. Long hands it off. That's a first down run as they go back to Broderick Taylor. Stacked up and now thrown down. But not before he gains the first down. Yeah, big first down there for Roger Taylor. And, you know, kind of the defense doing a good job of swarming to him, but it's a little bit too late. By the time they get to him, he's already three, four, five yards deep. And by that time, then he's going to push the pile another few yards. And so he's kind of just a very easygoing runner. But he picks up a lot of yardage very easily. Clock running under three minutes to go. Miller in no real hurry now on this offense. We saw him in a true hurry up fashion earlier in the ball game. Here, up two scores. Another handoff. This time, nothing doing. 
Taylor hit in the backfield, fell forward, gained a yard, that's it. Matt Maldonado, the senior defensive end there on the tackle, doing a great job of just meeting Taylor right at the line of scrimmage. Watch this, uh, right at the line of scrimmage, you can see there's, there's a first down marker. They actually meet him right be behind it, but he's able to fall forward uh, right back to the original line of scrimmage. Second and 10 for the Buccaneers. Clock running with 2.26 to go here in the third quarter. Pass play, that's gonna be caught. Nearly picked off, but what a job by Roderick Taylor on that catch. Yeah, number 13, Josh Bettis, he had a jump on it. He had one hand in front. I think if he had half a step more, he would have been able to put two hands on that football. It could have been an interception, but Roger Taylor muscling the ball from him, doing a great job of receiver, third down. Draw a line in the sand here if you're the Brownsville veteran Chargers. It's third and five. Long hands it off. That's gonna be a first down into secondary, running downhill inside the 30. Roderick Taylor moves the chains again. Yeah, Roderick Taylor just a big, physical, strong back and doing a great job. He has contact and then he spins around that contact for even more yards. And so I just kind of feel like he's just warming up right now, Joe, and this is not the time for Brownsville veterans to want him warming up. He's got 2,000 yards rushing yep. coming into this ball game. Tonight, 16 carries, now 72 yards. Another first down and another carry for Taylor. In the secondary again, got inside the 20 to about the 18. That's good enough for 11 more. Yeah, Alex, uh, I'm sorry, number six, Jaime Martinez. They're on the tackle for the Browns for Veterans Memorial. But uh, again, a lot of times, by the time they're tackling Roger Taylor, he's already in, in behind the linebacker into the safety zone, and that's too late. Minute five to go here in the third quarter. This is a sustained drive by the Miller Buccaneers. It's Taylor again hit this time, stays on his feet. We'll watch the progress. He probably got back to the line of scrimmage, that's it. Yeah, and really what you're seeing right now is kind of like this Bronzo Vets defense is trying to muscle some of that physicality back that they had earlier in this ball game. They are starting to show a little bit of fatigue now as this offensive line is just kind of getting a push every single time, but great job there holding the line. Buccaneers up to the line of scrimmage, ready to go. On second and 11. Long to throw, throws it, in zone, incomplete. What a huge hit. Did they call that a touchdown? No way. He's gonna say he caught the football, Joe. He says he had possession of the football before he was, came out. Let's see if we have the replay on that. Yeah. Here it comes. Wow. There's no review, though, in high school football, no. Joe. There's no review. You can't throw a red flag and review it in high school football. Touchdown, Buccaneers. They go up 27-7. And an extra point is away and good. Wow. I'm kind of speechless after that one, Joe, and that's, not, that's hard for me to get to that's that point. me, too. Because, you know, I, I would love to watch that replay slowly slowly, and kind of pick that apart. But, you know, for those folks out there wondering, yeah, there's a big screen here. They show the replay, but there's no instant replay no. in high school football. So two for me, the, the decision not to measure early in the game. Yep. And then this one now. So they sort of discussing it. This is a group out of Houston. Well, it's done. The extra points up, yeah, it's it been happened. good. It's, it's a touchdown, yeah. It, it's, it's not coming it's, back, It's folks. now history. It'll be debated for a yeah. long time. Yeah, and, and, and I did see he did catch the ball. He did go to the ground, right? But it's that whole, what, what is the process of a catch? Yeah. And, and you know, honestly, it's not a science. It, it's it's going to be more dependent on what is seen in the moment. Um, I mean, back to Des caught it, all right? Let's go back yeah. to that point. And so, you know, he did catch the football. He did go to the ground. Did the ground cause... The fumble, so Eric so Madera or Eric Alexander, that is, is on the sideline. And uh, Eric, you had a really good view of that down there. We had an instant replay. You tell me, catch, no catch. Um, that, that's a tough one. I've been debating down here to see. It, it looked like he had fallen on the floor and knee touched when that ball popped out. I would have thought they would have overturned that and said no good, but 
Sometimes you need highlight plays here in the fourth round. That's going to be one that you look back at the end of this game and say, how did he catch that? But Brownsville Vets, you, need, you knew it was going to be a tough game. Can't put your head down. Still have 12 minutes of play. Kick off by the Buccaneers. Deep kick this time, fielded by the Chargers. Dropped again. Pick it up, now bring it out to the 15, out of the 20, and that's it. Buccaneers saying they took the football away, but I think they had blown the progress dead. You kind of get this feeling right now, Joe, you know, that Miller <laughs> is kind of poised now, right? They, they, they've got that touchdown call. They, they have this mu another muff on a kickoff, you know, and, and you kind of feel like if Brownsville doesn't do anything on this drive here, Miller could really run away with this thing. Well, they're up 28-7, to seven, and the importance of it is is that, well, Brownsville veteran had success. Mm -hmm. Scored on a drive. It took eight minutes to do it. Right. And then it was answered not just by points, but by a sustained drive by the Miller Buccaneers, who were like, you want to play time? Okay, we'll play clock now. So here come the Chargers on a first down play. Montoya going to keep it, bounce it outside. Thrown down after a short gain, maybe two. Yeah, Montoya doing a good job there. I mean, you can see the fight that he has in him. And there at the end, you know, instead of just kind of taking the hit on, he spun trying to get some more yards. He really wants to kind of ignite this team right now. But, but really for me, right, as we go to the fourth quarter, you know, the playbook's got to open, Joe, your Veterans Memorial. I mean, th this Miller's already got you. They, they know what you're doing. Yes, you had a drive that scored a touchdown, but really right now, if you're Miller, you're just kind of like, just keep doing the same thing. We, we know what you're going to do. Yeah, we would almost let you score yeah. a, 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 what would be a scripted Brownsville Veterans type of score, and that is a six, seven-minute drive. Mm -hmm. We'll give you two of those sure. and still beat you by a touchdown. That's right. You got to have a quick strike ability right now, your Brownsville Veterans Memorial, because you're down three touchdowns. And so, he, a, an eight minute drive is not going to win you the game right now. And Miller knows that. And so, Miller's kind of just kind of going to hold on. You know, I feel like they're kind of in, in this mode right now, Joe, where they're like, they're starting to settle into this thing and say, especially if they get one more stop, get one more score, they're getting ready for next week. Second down for this Charger team. Montoya, ready to go. Charger offense now over 200 total yards, 176 of that on the ground, 29 through the air. We'll pitch it wide. Trio on the run, got out of bounds at the 30. That's near first down yardage. I think he's a yard short. Gilbert Trio, yeah, it's going to be third and one. So if you're Brownsville veterans, you, you, you have to look at stuff like that. If you're going to stay on the ground, get out of bounds. You, 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 the clock is not your friend at all. No. <laughs> Nothing on that big scoreboard is your friend at all. Third down here. And one. Montoya hands it off. That's good enough for a first down. You know, I, I, I'm watching this kind of develop right now, and, and you know, the offense is moving the chains. It, it is moving the chains. The offense has been productive, you know, fast, past couple of drives. But when you're down this much with, like you said, the clock is not your friend, like this is not the offense that you need in this scenario. This is where you, you really need to go spread offense. You've got to get a few receivers out there with some options and try to stretch the field. Trevelyan got the first down. Now the clock is running once again. They do stop it in high school after a first down. Uh, but Brownsville veterans will still back in the huddle. And so precious time goes away there. Trio catches, hesitates, and that allows lots of white jerseys to join him. He might gain one on the play. Yeah, Miller is, is kind of, you know, they've been able to set in their base defense, and right? They haven't had to really switch out of it. They haven't had to bring in different, you know, uh, packages or whatever um, because the offense really hasn't changed too much throughout the game. And so, you know, right now where the Chargers are, are making way is when a player makes a good play, basically. But Miller's defense is on it. Under 11 to go here in the fourth. 28-7 the lead. Miller on top. Last second pitch to Trio. He might gain a yard again. Stays in bounds. 
They gave him two. It's third and seven coming up. Uh, Jaden Vela there on the on the stop, number 20, doing a great job. And you see another sophomore. You know, Miller's kind of loaded in the defensive backfield with sophomores, young players. Uh, great experience for them here in this, this level of the playoffs, right? Um, but really, you know, kind of going back to that, I know it's a kind of going back to the same conversation, Joe. There's only so many ways you can run the option. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and a bundle. Call it seven. Short seven. Montoya has time to throw, delivers. That's going to be caught. First down. There he is. There's Nick Tovar. Nick Tovar, number 88. You know, is one of the tallest players on the field. You can kind of see this. Watch this. Great job there. Gets in space. Nobody's expecting him to get the ball because he hasn't had a, a target all game long, and he slips right behind that linebacker in, in front of the safety. And he's a big, great target uh, for Brownsville Vets to keep dumping the ball off to. The senior tight end moves the chains. Ball squarely on the 50-yard line. Stopped the clock with 10.04 to go as he got out of bounds. Three backs now in the backfield behind Montoya. Going to throw again. Delivers a deep ball downfield. He's got a man. It's incomplete. Looking for Jerry Gomez. Jerry Gomez had it. It was in the bread basket right there in between his two hands. I mean, it was a tough spot. He had to manipulate his body, right, to catch that. But great throw, outside shoulder, right on the sideline. You know, that's what they need more of right now. Now, the only thing is you're putting Jerry Gomez out there by himself. He's the only receiver split out. And so all the pressure from the safety and all eyes are going to be on him. You've got to offer another opposite option on the other end of the field. Gomez lines up wide left. Under 10 to go. Montoya hands or pitches it to Trio. Trio got a block on the outside. Now he takes it upfield. Trio still on his feet. Got it to the 30-yard line. Yeah, great job there. That's a playmaker. You know, I, I said there's only so many ways you can win the option. That yeah. time he actually gets a play, makes a play, and there's a flag on the field. Penalty thrown at the end of that. Looks like that's against the Miller Buccaneers. As the ball's down at the 30-yard line momentarily. They're going to take a walk on the Miller side, and it's a biggie down to the 15. We've reached a point in which if you're on the Brownsville veteran side, an awful lot has to go right in a short period of time. It all starts right here. Red zone possession, ball at the 15-yard line of the Miller Buccaneers. Buccaneers up by three scores. Montoya going to keep it. Got a block to the outside. Runs past the man. Through another. And he is in. Touchdown. Sheer determination by Montoya on the outside. I mean, I tell you what. He just really wheeled himself into the end zone. Following his blocker's patience. But right here then was all Montoya. He saw the pylon. He knew he had to be inside of it. And he gave his best effort. Montoya keeping his team in the game. Extra point coming up for the Chargers. We can keep that crowd mic up. That's good. And it is good. 28-14. Each team has had the ball twice in the second half. Each team has scored twice in the second half. Miller's saying every bit. We'll trade scores. We're up two. They get the football. Aaron Signs, is it now that you dial up the onside kick? Well, I tell you what, why not? And, and, and I think you have to because <clears throat> your offense there did get a score in right there, but it was a long drive once again. And so you've got to give your offense short field to work with and with little time. And so I think the best option is, you know, you go for the onside right now, uh, unless you really feel that your defense can pin them deep. And last drive showed that Miller was starting to warm up and really move the ball at will. Second touchdown run of the ball game for Storm Montoya for Brownsville veterans. And uh, Miller already out with the return man. I was going to throw it down to Eric, but uh, we'll, we'll get him in a moment and get his thoughts. Maybe we'll be talking about an onside kick attempt here. Miller brings a return man further upfield. You want to pin him deep? Kick it deep. Keep it in bounds. Keep it in play. And let this ball land at the 10, and let's see who races back and gets it. Short kick. 
Fair catch is called for and made. This community, that was a little danger zone there. If you would have tripped over that, his teammate there, that would have been a mess. So Miller's offense makes their way on the field. What have they done so far this evening? 308 yards of total offense, 83 on the ground, 225 through the air. Most of that rushing yards came on the last possession. They're back out here leading 28-14, 9-44 remaining in the fourth. Trevor Long trying to guide his team into the fifth round. First down play here, handoff. Good second effort that time by Broderick Taylor. Hey, you ask about a second gear, there it was for just a second. He, he at least shifted into second. Yeah, and, and Charger defense doing a great job of swarming to the football, and really they're kind of keen on him right now because last drive he took most of the snaps, he took most of the handoffs, and he's going right up the gut, not even doing anything fancy. And so right now the Red are saying, where's 21, and they're trying to get after him. 19 carries, 88 yards on the ground for Broderick Taylor. Now the Buccaneers are in clock management. Play clock under 10. Long on second and six. Taylor this time is hit and shut down. Gain of about a yard and you start circling plays as is this the play of the game so far? Watch yes. number 32, Matt Maldonado. He gets down there on his calves and he just doesn't let go. And that's tough when you have such a strong runner with strong legs like that. And so hats off to number 33, Maldonado for making that stop. Third and six for the Buccaneers. Again, they're in clock management. Play clock at 20, game clock at 8.34. See how long they go before they take the snap. It's a quick snap and a pass play, and that's gonna pick off. Chargers pick it off. Take it inside the 20. There's your big play. Eros Pineda with the interception for the Chargers. Man, I wanted to give the crowd as much time on that one, Joe, because the excitement and the energy. We're right next to the veterans more coaches, by the way. These guys are going off over here next to us. And Pineda just does a great job. He just jumped that route. They've been close a couple times tonight on Trevor Long, and finally Pineda is able to get one for his team. And the offense has got a shot. 8.22 remaining in the ballgame. Just the fourth interception of the year for Trevor Long. First down for Brownsville veterans. Ball outside the 20 at the 23, maybe the 24 yard line. And they'll hand it off up the middle. Trevelyan with a big carry. Takes it inside the 15. Energy right now, Brownsville veterans. Alvin Trevelyan, man. I tell you what, I think he's on one leg right now. And watch him. He just powers his way through that sheer will and determination by Montoya, Trevelyan, anybody who's touching the ball for the Veteran Memorial Charger right now. They got eight yards. It's second and two. Clock goes under eight minutes to go. Again, the importance of this is to score, score quick if you're Brownsville veterans. It's not just get points. You have to score quick. You have two scores you have to make up. Trevelyan on the fake. It's a quarterback keeper. Montoya, touchdown, Chargers. Oh, my. Watch this replay. Montoya, again, carbon copy of the last drive out. Right-hand side, powering his way to the end zone. He would not be denied two touchdowns in a row, three on the night for Montoya, and he is single-handedly, along with his offense, putting this team on his back right now and powering the Chargers to this comeback. Extra point coming up for Brownsville veterans. It's a booming high kick into the street. It's good. 28-21, one score football game, 7.46 left in the fourth. It's almost as if that extra point was a statement, right? Like, boom, I'm going to put this in the street behind the brought-in bleachers from the, you know, wheeled in by a truck or whatever, and Brownsville, they are alive right now, and it's going to be a part of this. Now let's go down to the sidelines with the guy with a great view of that is Eric Madera, and let's take a, a listen at what Eric just witnessed down on that field. Whew, you just witnessed one of the biggest plays of tonight. This offense for Brownsville Vets ever since halftime, they have flipped the switch. The fire is underneath them, and they're going to start to cook. Still a lot of time left on this game, but this squad for Brownsville Vets are charging forward. 
Charging forward indeed. And now it's kickoff time for the Chargers. Thank you, Eric Alexander, down there on the sidelines. Well, I've, I've said it four or five times, the onside kick. Uh, right now, with the return men up around the 25, you can kick it over their heads. And I, I don't think there will be a return out of this. Chargers to kick it. They do. Booming kick this time. Lands in and out of the end zone. All right, Aaron Signs. <laughs> well, I, I just got to say something, right? There, I don't know if you all can pick that up on the broadcast, but this crowd has been yelling, si se puede, right? <laughs> That's an old Cesar Chavez, right, chant from the farm work, United Farm Workers of America. And it, it, but it is resonating from this stadium tonight as this RGV is kind of surrounding this, this Charger football team. And, and for you Miller fans listening out there, please understand, right, like just the emotion of this game. I mean, you know, the, your Miller team has come in. They're, they're excited. I feel there's a mutual respect here at the stadium tonight, and it's a beautiful thing. So, Here comes Trevor Long. Again, his team leads by seven. Hands it off. It's Taylor running hard, hit hard, stays on his feet, and Broderick Taylor ends up gaining three out of what should have been nothing. Yeah, talking about sheer will and determination. Now, Broderick Taylor is showing that on his end over here, and he would not be denied those extra yards that he was pushing for. And he kind of was stopped at the line of scrimmage, but then he burst forward for a couple more. Lost a helmet in the play, so he'll have to leave the football game for at least a play. Taylor got four, second and six. Clock at 7.30 and counting here on the fourth. Long hands it off. First man through, hit. It's going to be uh, Nigel Glad. Glad gains four more. It's third and two coming up. Yeah, big hit there by the linebacker again. And, uh, and who other than Jaime Martinez, right, the senior. And you can see that on the replay. However, that's inching close to that first time marker. So big hit, but after a few yards. Glad stays in the game as Broderick Taylor is on the sideline. Third down and two. Long, hands it off, Taylor, second effort. He should get a first down across the 35. Yeah, and I'm surprised that they're gonna leave Roger Taylor off the field now he comes back on, but uh, they're gonna, they ran with number 35 again, uh, Nigel Glad, and the sophomore showing the, the, the youth of this team, right? Uh, it does enough to get a first down for his team. First down, uh, the clock runs, 6.44 to go in the fourth quarter. Trevor Long looks to the sideline. Play clock at 20. Has Taylor to his left. Remember, he's got receivers all over the field that can make plays. It's Taylor running right. Taylor in the secondary, running downhill, running over a couple, got it to the 50. Yeah, Taylor's going to show what he's made of right there. Again, remember, total yards for this young man, 2,563, plus what he's got tonight. And uh, this is a, a, an amazing top 75 stats-wise in the nation, by the way, for running backs. Uh, and so he's kind of coming alive here when they need him to for Miller. He's over the century mark in yards uh, carried. 22 attempts, 110 yards. Brownsville Veterans burns a timeout. 6-10 to go here in the fourth quarter. And that Charger team over there talking things over. Again, it's been a heavy dose of Broderick Taylor here in the second half. Yes, there was a kick return for a touchdown, and don't lose the fact in that, that that flipped the script on how this second half started. Uh, but since then, Anything on the offense that's been produced has been by Broderick Taylor. And remember, folks, we started this second half 14-0 in our 28-21. Like, I'm trying to replay in my mind all these things that have happened to get us to this point. But like you said right now, you know, they've got Broderick Taylor in the backfield. D don't risk another interception. I think they said if you can get us first downs, we're just going to keep handing it off. It's going to take Veterans Memorial to get him in the backfield or force a fumble. They, they may have to sell out against the run. And again, there's some dangerous yes. guys out there that, that have been catching passes all year long. 6.19 to go in the fourth. First down for the Miller Buccaneers. Trevor Long passes it. It's going to be incomplete. They threw a penalty False flag. False start first. Do you decline it? If they, if they didn't blow it dead, they can decline that. Okay. They're going to take it, so first and 15 now. First and 15. Von Miller running right behind number 74, Keyshawn Lewis, that offensive <laughs> guard on the left-hand side. First down for the Buccaneers. This is Taylor. Taylor 
got to the 50, that's about it. Two yards, clock on a run. Yeah, Keyshawn Lewis just cleared out the defensive tackle and Taylor just found a big old gaping hole, went right through it. But Chargers doing a good job, that secondary, that linebacker's coming up and making a stop. Second down, 14 yards to go. Trevor Long, 17 of 27 for 225 and a touchdown. He also was intercepted in the passing game. Broderick Taylor stands beside him with over 100 rushing yards in the game. Second down play, showing blitz of the Chargers. They give it to Taylor. He's stopped after a short gain, got back near the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage. It's third and 10. Yeah, I tell you what, that could have been offsides and it could also have been false start. And, and I think the official kind of said, well, neither of them benefited, so he didn't call either one because uh, there was a blitzing linebacker and then that left tackle kind of flinched a little bit. But either way, third down and 10. This, is, this could be pinpointed as, as the play that says the Chargers were able to make the comeback and or that M Miller was able to finish him off. I told you to circle a play earlier and say, is this the play of the game? Is this the play of the game? It's third and 10. Blitz coming, setting up a screen, and a big hit! Completed pass, but watch this. Josh Bettis, number 13. He read that screen all over, and he was all over the tackle at the 50-yard line. And they've seen this play. They've been running that screen in the middle of the field successfully. This time, they choose to run it swinging left, and... I tell you what, he was he read that Josh Bettis knew it was coming and he made a big play punt team on the field for Miller. Punt team on the field. Now the Chargers hadn't been trying to come after the punter, which in this case is Christian Torres. Torres' job here is to try to pin this Charger team deep. Clock is running, by the way, as that was completed pass, and the receiver stayed in bounds. Now the official is gonna say Miller wants to call a timeout. They did so right before a five-yard penalty. 4.03 remains, 28-21 the score. Miller with the lead. Chargers gonna get the football, Aaron Sines. Yeah, and I tell you what, one thing, I, I, I can't put it too far out of my mind that Miller would try something here because they, they've been taking risks on the special team side of the football. Now, is this a smart way to kind of run a fake on this one? You got to be ready if you're, you're the Chargers. So I think you're kind of going max protect, right? You want to make sure you don't give anything up and you're probably going to get pinned back deep if the punt gets off. But I tell you what, there's a lot of momentum. I'm watching a lot of the Chargers here on the sideline, Joe. They're talking it up to their, their, their classmates, the cheerleaders, the fans. Almost like they have this confidence about them right now, and it's impressive. And, and I'm feeling it, you know, as a football fan. Fourth down, 13 yards to go. If they go for it or fake it, they'll have to take the ball to the Charger 37 to get a first down. Chargers will send a man back to return this kick, and that's Gilbert Trio. We talked about him having some energy, wanting to play with some urgency, wanting to have that big impact play. Snap is a low one, bobbled. Punter's gonna have to pick it up, gets the kick away, and it's nearly blocked. It goes out of bounds near the 50. Wow, special teams. For Miller has been a tale of two tapes. Watch this, low snap, it's happened before. We're gonna miss it because they're following downfield. But I'm gonna tell you what, Brownsville Vets kind of pulled off, right? <laughs> if they would have gone for the block, someone would have picked that up and taken it for a six <laughs> because they were paying ma max for tech just in case of a fake, they were never get there. Regardless of, they got the ball on the 50 yard line. Short field for the Brownsville Veterans Memorial Chargers. 3.53 remains in the fourth quarter. And before the snap, the officials get things set. Now we're ready. Montoya under center on a first down play. Trevelyan gets a couple. My eyes was up on Trio, right? Because he, <laughs> was, he, he huh? was on that third option. And, and Montoya does such a good job of concealing the, the handoff. If Trio would have had that one, that guy would have been gone. And so watch out. Watch out that that doesn't happen again and Trio gets the ball. Second down and uh, eight yards to go for the uh, Chargers. The short side of the field is the receiver's Jerry Gomez. Trevelyan again this time. Drives forward. Miller Buccaneers are there. We'll gain a couple. 
Yeah, 53 there on the interior from Miller doing a great job. Uh, Donovan Otero, and I called his name earlier. And, you know, those defensive linemen, they don't get called a lot because those line they're, they're – taking the blocks so the linebackers can make the tackles and but those defensive tackles have had a long game tonight and they've done a good job in the middle of that triple option clock running we're under three to go here in the football game Montoya wants to throw does it is caught and then drop that's going to be a first down for the Chargers <laughs> Jerry Gomez there on the outside. I mean, he's been consistent for them. Watch this. Montoya has to turn his body because he's running left. So he catches this, drops it in the on the field, comes back to recover. Wow. Chains move for the Chargers. The official blows the whistle on the far side of the field. We talked about you can't review this stuff, Aaron right, Signs. Right. <laughs> and it's hard. You know, you know, these things are happening so fast out here. I'm wondering if they're, they're going to test the validity of the catch. But they have to go with the official called initially because there's no review. But they can discuss it. Here's a white cap. White cap's going to make the official announcement here, the referee. Oh, he's not going to say anything. First down. First down, Chargers. Ball at the 35 yard line. He'll start the clock on his signal. That's what he's uh, indicating right now. And there we go. Clock running with 2.46 to go. For some reason, they've blown it dead. So some extra seconds here for this Charger team and the offense. Montoya takes a snap, going to throw. Straight drop back, delivers a pass. Man, wide open. Caught on the sideline. That's Jerry Gomez. Jerry Gomez has been waiting all night for this opportunity. He's been patient. He's been blocking for his teammates. Look at him downfield. He catches this. He kind of has to figure out where he's at. He realizes that he's still inbounds by a yard, so he tries to get a couple more. Good for this young man because he's been a team player tonight. Now he's getting the opportunities late in the game. 2.39 to go here in the fourth quarter. Chargers started to drive on the 50. They're now inside the 20. Short side of the field, right side running. Trio. He'll get out of bounds, but not before he gains seven. You want to keep the ball in the hands of your most experienced players, right? Playmakers, obviously, but Trio is very aware of what's going on. He knows he needs to get upfield, and he knows he needs to get out of bounds as well. And a playmaker like that, with the wisdom, you got to get it in, the, in his hands more. Give it to him this next play if you can. 2.35 remaining in the fourth quarter. Chargers in a red zone possession. Down a score at the Miller. 13. Keeper by Montoya. Right side. Ran through one. Thrown down violently there after he gained a couple. Looked like he got a first down. And this is a replica of his last two touchdowns. Same area of the field. Same direction. This time, Miller doing a good job of getting outside. Get, forcing him to the sideline sooner. Uh, but because he fell over a defender and rolled out of bounds, clock is dead. First and goal. For the Chargers of Brownsville Veterans, 2.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Trevilian in the backfield behind Montoya. Takes it on the carry, right side, inside the five. Dives forward to the one. No indication yet, he's down. It looked to me as if he rolled over the defender and then stretched the football over the goal line. Let's see if we can see on this replay. It's really tough, watch this. He goes down. Is his knee down? Not yet. Look, he's on top of a defender. His head is down. <laughs> but it looks like the football was over the goal line. Great camera work right there yeah, by the BISD awesome. crew. Awesome job. Second and goal. Montoya under center. Drives forward. And score it. Touchdown, Chargers. Now, do you go for two? You're at home. Yeah, just because we're next to the coaching staff up here, they're, they got the one up. I think they're going one. Okay, we have uh, privileged information there. But I don't know. We'll see. I tell you what, Coach right here, he's running across, getting somebody on the field. It's the kicker. Yep, Joseph Brock. <laughs> get out there. He's the holder. Yes, sir. 28-27 with a minute 51 to go here in the fourth quarter. Out of the hold of Joseph Brock. Chargers trying to tie it up. Kick is away. And good. 
Nothing decided here at Sam Stadium in this regional semifinal. Corpus Christi Miller, Brownsville veterans, 28 apiece. Joe Bowling, thanks for calling me. How about that? Let's just start <laughs> with that right now because, wow, what a game to be a part of here in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, whether you're from Corpus Christi Miller, Brownsville Vets, RGV, South Texas as a whole, I mean, what can you ask? The week after Thanksgiving, Joe Bowling, <laughs> to be able to have a high school football game, you know, and to be able to have it here on YouTube, free for people to watch. I mean, what, what an amazing opportunity. Whoever you're rooting for tonight, man, you got to be rooting for football and high school football community. It's awesome. Now, on the other side, the Miller Buccaneers. Yep. If you're looking at a team with lightning uh, capability, this is their ball here game. they come. Yep. They've already scored a touchdown on a kickoff return. Yep. Uh, they've had big play capabilities and scores. And they've got a minute 51 to go and two timeouts left here in the fourth quarter. And a lot of playmakers. This time they drift their return men back more traditional, the 15. Last kickoff went in the end zone. And so if you're the Chargers and you got that kind of leg again, I would dare not try to put it in anyone's hands to return this kick. If I were Ramon Reyna, the junior kicker, let it go. He goes with a short kick. It's going to be fielded by the Buccaneers. They'll reverse it to the right side. Chargers are there to contain it, running through a man down to the 50-yard line. Not Woo, sure what a that. run. Not sure about that, Joe. You know, I, you know, I figured that you'd want to kind of pin him back deep. But the thing is that, guess what? You had back there Corey Holmes. And I think that's kind of what they wanted to avoid. Don't kick it deep because... Yes, you can pin them, but you got a, a speedster. Either way, you know, you talked about it. Miller, is. this is the type of team, this is the type of environment that they're poised for. They've got the playmakers, 143, not a problem. They can get downfield and make a score quick. That was George Simmons on the return, and he ran over yeah. a would-be tackler there. First down here for Trevor Long. Turns, hands it off to Taylor. Taylor uh, stays on his feet. Ends up gaining a good seven or eight yards on that play, Broderick Taylor. And this is where Miller, this is what Miller's built for, right? They're built for quick strike ability. They're built for playmakers, uh, and and this is their their ball game. Chargers really have to play outside of the realm of possibility. Trevor Long gonna throw it. He completes a pass. The Bella fumble on the play. Chargers get it. Oh my gosh! The huge hit. This lot, watch this. Just watch, watch the play. The big hit when the Chargers needed it most. I said they have to play out of the realm of possibility, and that is exactly what that means. I didn't know what it meant in the moment, but now watching that, I know that that's what that means because there is no other way. Because Broderick Taylor was going to milk the clock, Joe, <laughs> and score a touchdown. I'm telling you. But if it wasn't for that fumble, the Chargers would be done right now, and they've got life in them. Minute 15 to go, fourth quarter. Now the Chargers have the football and two timeouts. Montoya has been perfect in possessions here in the second half. Wants to throw here. Has time, delivers a pass. It's going to be, was that caught? No, incomplete. Yeah, incomplete. You know, good good defensive play there by number 22 of, of uh Miller, Donovan Kristen, and he just was on him all day. But I'm telling you what, they're going to, to Jerry Gomez. It's almost like they've been kind of hiding him in the background, and also now here he is, and he's making some plays. Just a little bit underthrown there, but the Chargers still have the advantage. Second and 10, incomplete pass. Now Montoya 5 of 11 for 70 yards in passing. Still a minute 10 to go. Going to throw again. Now going to run. Ton of room down the left side. Montoya to the 45 and out of bounds. Minute to go. Wow, Montoya was looking to his right. Watch this replay. He's got plenty of time in the pocket. Hats off to the offensive line. He steps up, looks left. There was nobody for about 30 yards, Joe. He had a clear green space to run into, and he sure did. First down, charges off of the feet of Montoya. Now you start asking the question, how big is Roman Reina's leg? Well. We've seen some booming kicks on extra points. Ball at the 43, minute one to go. Chargers don't necessarily have to pass the ball much more here, a couple first downs. They're gonna throw again. And they go for it all. 
And there's a penalty flag throw. Now it's not a spot foul. Aaron Sines will make sure we let fans know that. If this is a pass interference on the defense, it's a 15 yarder. A little bit back and forth jockeying there, but I do feel like the defensive back held him from being able to release back inside to make that catch. We'll see what the white cap has to say. And it goes against the defense. Now there's 15 yards. So now I'm gonna ask the question. You got Max Cordoba listed as a kicker for Brownsville veterans. We've seen Roman Reyna in the game kicking extra points. Who's got the bigger leg? Gonna find out. Gonna find out. I tell you what, the last extra points went over into the street, I think into that apartment complex. He did, he boomed, so he boomed the last one. That's why I was saying, he's. what's his leg? 55 seconds to go, Chargers. Game tied at 28 apiece. Everybody shifts right side for Montoya. Storm Montoya gonna throw. Has time, delivers, that's caught underneath. Tight end catches. Stays on his feet to the 20. That's Nick Tobar's second catch of the game. Yeah, biggest body on the field, especially for the Chargers. And you, he's been open in that midsection of the field all game long. And now it's time to kind of get him the, the football here in this one. I'm going to tell you what, I, I'm going to do the math here. A little extra curricular going on there at the end, Joe. Do you see that? It'd be a 47-yard field goal okay. or 37-yard field goal 36. from right here. the 20 now. So yep. 20 plus 7 plus 10, right? Yeah, 34 seconds to go. Timeout was called. Wow. Second timeout of the half called. Let's go down to Eric Madera on the sideline. Eric, you saw him warming up in kickoffs. Were you paying attention how big Roman Reina's leg is? Possibly. You know, we're looking at the Brownsville Vets kicker here. I feel his, his sweet spot is going to be inside this 25. That's where you get the most consistent from him. He was banging some shots back from the 30. You want to make his life easy here, especially with the crowds on their feet. Huge moment. But we'll see what Brownsville Vets wants to do. Kicker in their back pocket to get this. All right, you heard it. He said he was booming kicks inside the th right at the 30-yard line. And so uh, the, the sweet spot was to get it to the 25. Chargers with one timeout remaining. It's second down and one. You can do a lot of things on second and one. Montoya is ready. Pitches it. Right side, it's Trio. Trio inside the 10. Trio down to the 5. Trio to the 1. To the goal line. Touchdown, Trio! Brownsville Veterans takes the lead. You Gilbert said he was going to have a big play. Had to have a big Look at this guy go from this moment he came out in the second half this guy was not going to quit on his team i could tell from the first drive that he had something inside him that he was not going to give in on and he gets a touchdown the go-ahead touchdown for the chargers 25 seconds left well now we look at the leg of roman Rea. how far will he kick this one from brownsville over the street again. 35-28, Brownsville veterans. This team was down 28-7 in the fourth quarter. Joe, <laughs> look, you gotta take the motions out, right, in this <laughs> job and say, hold on, timeout. You've got some playmakers from Miller that can still make something happen. All you right? do, you do. But regardless of what happens in this next drive, play, whatever happens, this game is going down in the history books, Joe, as one of the greatest high school games that we have witnessed ever. This is a good one. <laughs> wow. Miller, still 25 seconds left. Let's Again, start. You got to hold the celebration off yeah, because of the of fact course. that you've got. Uh, there's. Well, I'll, I'll look at it real quick because I had that stat up earlier. While right, you looked that up, by the way, for those of y'all who are curious, the winner here plays the winner of AM Consolidated in Smithson Valley. All right, that's on that side. On the other side, you got Abilene Alito. Forney and Lancaster. There's only eight teams in 5A Division I. Whoever wins tonight, there'll be four teams left in 5A Division I in Texas. Buccaneer offense on the season, 7,411 yards on the season. 3,500 3, in the rushing game, 3,600 in the passing game. Can they score points with one play? Yes, sir. Do they need points in one play? Yes, sir. Special teams have already scored here in the second half as well. If I'm BVM, I'm kicking this ball out of bounds. I'll take that penalty. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'll make him earn it with a play from scrimmage. Yep. 
I'm just an announcer, my friends. <laughs> a great one at that, Joe. Kick off by the Chargers, and they'll blow it dead. Time, Time out call by Time Brown. Time out on a kickoff. Well, they, they wanted to see where yep. the return yep. men were, I'm, yep. I'm guessing. Yep. All right, let's go down to Eric Madera on the sideline during this timeout. And, Eric, you know, we were talking about field goal opportunities. Now let's talk about you watch the Miller Buccaneers warming up. Big play capabilities here. It's not over by any stretch. No, not at all. This Miller squad, they understood that they've had the ball game in their hands throughout most of this one. They're going to come out here with full fire, but this is where this defense, who's been playing stellar for Brownsville Vets, has to come out once again to close this game out. They are a couple seconds away, 25 to be exact, from making the next round and continue on their playoff hopes. That's Eric Alexander. We'll be going down to him uh, for post game. If we get to a post game in this thing, Ooh. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, speaking of post game, Brownsville PD is lining up on the sidelines here. I think they're anticipating a field rush one way or another. They could. Well, we <laughs> they talked about that they could bring the goal post down. Kick off by the Chargers is a short pooch kick. This is returnable. And uh -oh. now they'll bring it to the outside to the 40. And that's where the Buccaneers will take over. 18 seconds to go. Football at their own 42. Yeah, anytime a, a Corey Holmes gets a hold of that football, you've got to hold your breath if you're having to go and tackle him downfield, right? And so uh, definitely able to get that taken care of as far as Veterans Memorial goes. Now here we go, 18 seconds, two timeouts re remaining, Joe. Trevor Long can throw this ball a long way. And, and so it is not over, folks. And he's got receivers that can go get it. First down play here. Long drops back to throw. Here comes pressure. Wanted to throw a screen incomplete pass. Long was upset there. Well, I, I tell you what, pressure for number 55, you got to call him out there. Damian Rodriguez, he's a sophomore defensive end, and he just does a great job of breaking down in front of Long, being an obstruction for his vision downfield, and Long just gets frustrated, and we've seen him frustrated a lot tonight. Second down, 14 seconds to go. Second and 10 for the Buccaneers. Chargers back in an ultimate prevent defense. Long slings a pass right side. Caught. Man stays in bounds. He's down. Corpus Christi Miller has two timeouts, and they get a timeout momentarily as the first down stops the clock with seven seconds to go. Yeah, Jaime Martinez, number six, the big linebacker there on another tackle. He's probably got five or six tonight. But I just got to say something before we get off here. I have never seen a head coach run around as much as J.C. Damitas, <laughs> Joe Bowling. I mean, he is up and down the field. He is talking to players. He's grabbing guys off the sideline. He is one of the most interactive football coaches that I have ever seen, especially in the head coach position. I just got to say that because he's running around here getting kickers, getting placeholders. The guy's everywhere, and so hats off to him. What an amazing job. His players resemble that same attitude and that passion. Seven seconds to go. Ball at the 43-yard line. So now you're in the position of Miller. If you if you go short, you got to get out of bounds or get a quick timeout. You you want to think you got two plays. You may only have one left, Aaron Signs. And in high school football, mm -hmm. if you're going to get burned deep, you can commit a penalty. Yes. Uh, yes, they'll get another play, but it won't be it's a, a spot foul. foul. It's not a spot foul. I've, I've talked to coaches in years past who have told their secondary. In this case, don't give up a touchdown. You commit penalty. a penalty. Take, Take a 15-yard penalty. penalty. We'll try it again. First down play here for the Buccaneers. Trevor Long drops back to throw. Waits, delivers right side. It's going to be caught and then out of bounds. Three seconds to go. On a catch by Corey Holmes. This will be the last play, barring a penalty, I should say, but should be the last play. Now, if, if you got, you're down a touchdown, who do you want? You want a Trevor Long type quarterback in the back of the world. Obviously, you want a Corey Holmes. You want a Taylor. You want these guys. And so Miller is is, is going to have to decide whether they're going to shrink under this pressure or step up and realize they've got the tools in the toolbox to make it happen. Chargers, last time they got in this position, I said they've got to play outside of the realm of possibility. <laughs> Here it is again. They, they've got an interception in the second half. They they dislodged the ball on a... On a fumble. 
you know, back. 12 years ago, I said, games should be covered here in the RGV. It should be streamed. We got 41,000 watching right now. Thank you, fans. Thank you, Joe Bowling. Vision, hard work, <laughs> here it is. And it'll go from here, it's not over. It's not over. What's it take to make me speechless? A little bit. Third <laughs> down, here we go. Third down play, ball game, season on the line for somebody. Long back to throw, has time, waits, delivers, in zone, and it is incomplete, Chargers win. Brownsville veterans, welcome to the fifth round. It's a historical victory on a historical field here at Sam Stadium on a Friday night in December. And they'll play another. Rio Grande Valley, through Brownsville Veterans Memorial, you are going to the top four <laughs> in 5A Division I in the state of Texas. History, right? This end of the valley at this season, this time is made here in Brownsville, Texas. Amazing moment, Joe Bowling, to witness what has happened here that is bigger than this geographical location. This area, this region, it's for you, folks. What a ball game, what a finish. And it literally came down to an up for grabs ball in the back of the end zone. And we had to wait and see. Was that caught, was that not caught? We'll see if Eric Madera can get to Coach Ramirez. If Eric Madera can get in front of Coach Ramirez, we'll have him interview Coach about this victory. Eric Alexander, that is. Eric, if you can get there, get to coach, get your camera in place, and get this historic interview. Cisa Puede is being yelled out across this stadium, Joe, and I tell you what, yes, it's possible, right? It can be done. And, you know, I think the Chargers really rallied to that battle cry here in the second half. You know, I said it from the beginning, on paper, uh, you know, I would have given it to Miller. I had a, just, just the sheer talent, the playmakers, stats, all that. But that believing that they could uh, has, has produced uh, an amazing outcome here tonight. Down 28-7 at one point in this ball game. You looked at things that, that needed to happen. Chargers not set up as a team that scores fast. Right, no. The defense, which had said throughout the first half, we'll keep you here. We'll keep you in this game. And they did. They just kept fighting, just kept working. And then the second half, defense is like, okay, you need us to do a little more? We'll cause some turnovers, and we'll give you the <laughs> ball back. And so, again, as, as I name a player of the game, which I, which I do for all of the broadcasts I do, mm -hmm. gosh darn, you, you look at you – know, you could look at the playmakers. I mean, it's it's real low-hanging fruit to say Storm Montoya sure, sure. drove this team down the field. It's three rushing touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, but, man, you could take any one of the defenders. And I'm talking any one of the defenders that played the majority of this football game and say you could be the player of the game because it, it took them all. Again, Eric Madera, if you can hear me down there and you can get to coach, I'd like for you to interview coach. I think that's key. Can you hear Yeah. down there on the field? I'm trying to spot him here with my eyes. I know Jammer's down there in the middle of all that. Jammer Ruiz on the camera. Yeah, great footage there. Again, we're trying to get to coach down on the field, J.C. Ramirez, but hey, so is everybody else. Yeah, that's right. And they will be for the next week. Eric Madera, if you can hear me, we're still looking to try to get Coach Ramirez.
Yeah, interesting to know, Joe, is, you know, Smithson Valley and him consolidated. We need to get the score from that, figure out who's going there. But, you know, on, on this side, folks, it's going to be – it's the semifinals. So these – the Chargers, along with the RGV, is going to the state semifinals. There's four teams left in 5A Division One. Yep, not since Port Isabel. 2003, I think that yes. was. Yes, made the last trip to the semifinals. Did the RGV get behind one team and say, everybody meet here. Yep. Let's go watch a semifinal game. The early word from Gilbert Leal when I talked to him as far as, that, hey, have you talked about coin flips? Of course, you know, you, you don't try to get into those interviews too often, but you still have to ask the questions. And so, so I did, and he said, well, Smithson Valley has, has answered our calls, and we've got a tentative agreement that if they win and we win, then next Friday we'll be at Buccaneer Stadium. And uh, on the other side, Consolidated, he said, we, we haven't got any calls from them yet uh, at that time. Okay, and Coach Ramirez is over there, and uh, you know, he, he came up to me when I was, when I was down there. I, I was just kind of talking to everyone I could see, and all of a sudden he come over and he's like, hey, I just want to thank you for being here. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I, I told him, I was like, well, thank you for doing what you did to get here. You know, and, and yeah. now here we go. You know, who knows what kind of rights will be granted. I do know that, uh, you know, when I started broadcasting down here in the RGV, I started with a, a little thing called Listen Live with Joe Bowling when, when the guys at the newspaper said, hey, uh, you ought to be broadcasting. You've done so many games, and the Valley needs to hear you. And I was like, well, there's no radio stations doing games. What do you do? And, and they're like, uh, well, you need to talk to somebody. And I was like, well, what about streaming games? Let's, let's start streaming them. And I started Listen Live. And so uh, – now, there's that in my back pocket always that says, don't give me the rights to video. I, I still know a thing or two about radio. Oh, you do. <laughs> and we, we can bring it home. Ramirez over there. Uh, wow. Yeah, they, they got him here on camera. And uh, just watching his emotions right now to me is so telling. It speaks louder than words. There's right there Storm Montoya. We cannot reinvent who we are. Yep. He won down 14 zero. But the reason why yeah, we're up. here is because we're good at what we do. The crowd right. mic is off, I guess. The challenge was on you. I told you. Nobody decides when you're, when you're I think that audio is coming through from Eric. Red, white, blue. Except for the guys in. Red, white, and blue. Absolutely. Hey. I can't pick it up. Uh, or it's just us. Okay, just the players, just the coaches. Wow. Our guys are down on the field. Uh, again, I, you, you can circle so many plays. But I, but I think the biggest play of the game, if, if you start backtracking out, yes, the touchdown to win it uh, is among the top plays of the game. But if you don't dislodge the football on a completed right. pass, Inside the 25-yard line, regional champion with Miller moving the ball, you're talking about losing by a score, and and I believe that tackle that dislodged the football uh, would be what I would consider the play. Yeah, I, I I I go there. I go to the interception earlier that, but I think Paramount was was that that fumble and fumble recovery. And then, of course, the offense capitalized. Finally, they were able to capitalize on gifts that the defense had given them all night long, right? And Man, I mean, I, I remember watching that play, and that's when I was like, I, I believe that they may do this. And I think that's the difference, right? That's kind of when the crowd got into it, and I think that really elevated the team, uh, that there was then belief that it could be done. Now, Eric Madera, uh, you know, he kept telling us from the sideline that, you know, throughout the first half and, and heading into the second half that, you know, the Chargers still believe. You, you could hear them. You could hear them talking about, hey, we still got this. We can do this. We can do this. There was never a, a, a moment to say, oh, well, good season. We tried hard. Sure. There was never a give up moment, um, which is, you know, it, it's always easy to say, yeah. talking about football in the RGV. Sure. That we, our hearts are bigger than everyone else, uh, regardless <laughs> yes. of the talent. Because you have to say that. But to back it up, <laughs> yeah. to back yeah. it up with, with some playmakers and talent and, and just creating opportunities and, and making it work. Wow, these guys are going to have a 
busy week now. If they thought this last week yeah. uh, was something coming out of Thanksgiving, um, this next week is something else. And it's in such uncharted territory for most, you know, teams here in the Valley. Like I said, going back to 2003 semifinals, Portis, I believe, were probably three at that time. Mm-hmm. Right? And so 5A is a little bit even tougher back. I think their semifinals was last week with 3A. Uh, or, or this tonight, I'm sorry. And so they're kind of a week behind. So the point I'm trying to make is that 5A and 6A is a little bit – it's uh-huh. a little bit tougher road to get there, right? And um, and so to be playing this far into – I mean, you're playing in December now. Next week you're officially playing the first week in December. And, uh, you know, you're that close to, to – to the state championship that you can you can smell it you can taste it it's a week away the state championship like i, I, <laughs> I was at that stadium that you know i was at that stadium last night and i was like i i, I said to dahlia it's like what would it be like if one of the teams from the yeah. valley played here Gee. and they're one game away yeah and, and you know every time like you go back to we talked about 2011 2003 2011 now you know every time a, a team kind of pushes the the barrier that much further then it makes other teams also believe you know we could do that too <laughs> and psj north you know was that for the valley last year and you know you know sam has been in it before and, and even brownsville you know hannah a few years ago uh not to this point but i'm just saying like every time a team from the valley pushes the needle moves the needle then other teams believe they could do it next year too and and that's how you gain momentum you know our ground if you will you know, in this region of football, it's tough to win here. And folks, by the way, we don't—I don't know yet—but they're playing the winner of A&M Consolidated, which is out of College Station, and Smithson Valley. And Smithson Valley knocked off College Station, College Station. last yeah. week, which was a favorite to win the state championship. Yep. So you know, it's got, the road's going to get harder from here. Yeah, absolutely. When, when and and I'll I'll say this: we we were monitoring things going on, talking to various coaches, and uh, before last week's game, Brownsville Veterans PSJ North. Right. Um, that game took place on a, the day before when Smithson Valley won. And, and the quote among coaches, mm-hmm. and not just these coaches, coaches that we talked to and I talked to, was, hey, the door just got open yeah. even bigger because College Station was that good. Yeah. And Smithson Valley is a team that X's and O's on paper sure. – has some openings that yep. one of these type of teams, a Brownsville yep. Veterans or a PSJA North type of running game, ball control right, game, right. just might. And, and, and I said it preseason uh, during our Luke Furia show. Go back and watch it if you want to hear it. But, but I said it preseason that in order to call it perhaps the greatest season thus far for a 5 or 6A team, someone was going to have to get to the round five and when they did, they would have to play with at least a chance going into the second half. Right, right. And I think that's what you look at as Brownsville veterans. You're going to be seeing – if you, saw, you thought you saw athletes here. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wait, yeah. wait till what's yeah. coming. Sure. Um, but you got to X and O it. you got to make the plays. Mm-hmm. And, and then you gotta, you got to give yourself a fighting chance. Uh, but the opportunity is there. The door is there. And, and they are indeed going to the semifinals. Yeah, we, the, the network was so bogged down here that I couldn't, like, search earlier. I was trying to get on that, you know, see there's yeah. a, an update on the score. But um, <laughs> I, I tell you what, it, it's clearing out now a little bit. There's still a lot of fans hanging out here and uh, celebrating this win. And just a really cool experience. I'm so thankful, you know, you're still with us. Thanks for joining us. I yeah, mean. thanks for tuning in wherever you may be. Um, you know, the, the beauty of YouTube is that the replay is available to, to watch immediately. Uh, we'll be handing this over to KBSD to, uh, you know, to use. Uh, we'll, we'll go down the rundown of, of who was participating in helping to bring this broadcast. Uh, but, again, if you, wanna, if you want one to learn from, uh, take a look at some of the camera angles that were used and uh, just capturing some of the moments. Uh, Any time from a broadcast perspective that I'm doing play-by-play, and I have the luxury of a color commentary, <laughs> which, by the way, Aaron, yeah. you're top-notch, and I appreciate the hey, thanks the, for the, the call, Joe. The efforts here. It, it, I started with you in 2011, <laughs> and, you know, and and uh, yep. have been fortunate and blessed to continue, you know, in in that field since then. But you know, it wasn't for you giving me that shot, 
<laughs> back then, I wouldn't be here today, so thank you. Yeah, but, but when, you, when you're able to say, let's go to the replay, yeah. and you get a yeah. real clear, concise oh, yeah. Help. play to, to, Big to, time. To, to go over, that makes it. You can see the interviews are, are going to be taking place uh, with J.C. Ramirez. I'm not sure. I'll look over at the technical guys and see if they still want me to try to stay with this broadcast and bring J.C. on board or not. Smithson Valley takes it over College Station A&M Consultant. So there it is. Smithson Valley. Uh, tentative plans. Tentative plans. This is just going off what Gilbert and I talked about uh, beginning of the week was that uh, Buccaneer Stadium on Friday at 7.30 uh, would be the next round matchup if Smithson Valley won and Brownsville Veterans won, and they both did. And so uh, how ironic is it that Miller Buccaneer, who plays their home yeah, games on right. Buccaneer Stadium. That's going to sting um, a little. But, man, you know, look, Miller, for Miller fans still listening right now, it's a young team. It is. They're going to be back next year. Yep. You know, and, and you know, it's, it's going to be a bump in the road. But Miller's got a future, a big time, and uh, it's, it's an impressive team. And they're going to be, I believe, even better next year. It was a great season for the Miller Buccaneers. They came in here 13-0, and averaging nearly 60 points a game. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the playmakers that was supposed to be out here on the field for the Miller Buccaneers, remember, was Damari Lister. Uh, who, if you don't remember that name, uh, he was an uh, integral part with the Andrew Body era mm. in the final season. And, uh, you know, Jaden Brown and all of those guys. And uh, Demario Lister was, is a senior. Yeah. He'll get to play. Hopefully uh, his, uh, his injury is healed up for basketball season. But it, had he been here, I, I would talk about it at halftime off the air, that he was the, the playmaker, the stretch the field kind of guy. That would have opened things up even more. Uh, and you've got this pocket passer and Trevor Long that's going to, going to be a good one. Always uh, he already great. is. Yeah. Just, you know, Miller, Miller fans, hold on next year. and Very well could see another Valley team second, third round again next year. So, And the celebration going on out there, the interviews going on. Hey, I, I talked to the TV guys uh, and girls before this game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, you know, years ago, when I was first asked to help do a game after I started it, we put one on television. Yep. And, and I said, we ought to get a round five game and just take everything we're doing here and let's put it on TV next week. Yes, sir. Check in with Joe here. All right. That's my technical director coming in saying, well, we're going we're gonna to put a wrap on this, baby. As you see, J.C. Ramirez getting it. I want to run down uh, again everyone that was instrumental in, uh, in a part of this broadcast. Okay, here we go. BISD. Straight down the line. Abigail Gonzalez, IR and SB. Thank you. Christopher Galvan on comms. Well, let's go to Eric Alexander, who has JC Ramirez uh, online. Get it, Eric. Well, Coach, heck of a job, heck of a win out here. Were your team battling down for most of this ball game? What was your consensus at halftime? What were you telling the boys? So what, what I shared with them was, guys, the only reason why we're here is because we're good at what got us here. So we are not going to reinvent ourselves in these 28 minutes of halftime. We're going to just have to dig, just search, dig a little deeper, and, and, and see what you find. And I told them, what you're going to find is you're going you're gonna to find a champion. And uh, I'm just so happy for them because they were able to get the job done. You know, Coach, being able to close out games, I know your faith was 100% having your quarterback in the hand to go drive down, but how did you feel your team's momentum and mentality was going into that last drive? You know, momentum is everything. These kids, you know, they're, they're 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. They're very impressionable. Um, you know, it happens even at the pros. So once we got rolling, um, it, it was first of all, it was, it was pretty cool to see their their crowd kind of go silent and our crowd just roar to life. Uh, that was phenomenal. Uh, I, you know, Storm Montoya is phenomenal, a phenomenal leader today. He really grew up a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm very confident that 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 he knows that he is uh, a special kid, but now he's proven that he's a special leader on the football field, and I, I'm very proud of him. 
You know, Coach, going into next week, I, I know you're still kind of uh, taking all this in, and you're talking about how your team was able to step up. What, what do you think the mindset's going to be for preparing for this next upcoming week? You know, I've talked to, uh, I had made preliminary arrangements with both teams, and I know, just I'll say the same thing. You know, nobody shows up to the fourth round because they're not a great team. Uh, we're playing in the fifth round. Uh, I, I, I know it's Smithson Valley. They're, they're a great team. But I'll say it again, so are we. And so we'll be looking forward to another great week of practice. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll see how that one plays out. All right, Coach, last one. Uh, message to the fans out here for tonight as well as going to next week. Uh, first and foremost, thank you to my family. Uh, I love you, darling. Thank you for being out here, my two boys, uh, my parents, a whole bunch of friends, a bunch of people from my church, uh, my church family. So uh, just thank you all for being here. Brownsville, thank you for having our backs. Thank you for not believing the hype that there was going to be terrible parking. Uh, it was worth your time. God bless you all. Yeah, guys, good luck. To, good luck next week. Have a good win tonight. Thank you. Oh. Well, guys, heck of a win here in Brownsville Vets as Brownsville Vets will make their way into the fifth round. But, Joe, we'll go back, right back up to you in the booth. That is Eric Alexander. He's one of my rising stars on, on my little company that I've got rolling here. I appreciate his, his efforts down there on the field. Uh, again, let's run down everyone that was part of this broadcast. Abigail Gonzalez, Christopher Galvan on comms, Jessica Cortinas on a camera, Marco Delgado on camera, Gail Espinoza on a camera, Alejandro Lopez also assisting on camera, Coral Rodriguez on camera, Jammer Ruiz, uh, I saw him handling the camera throughout that broadcast. Rudy Zamaripa Jr. down there as a spotter, uh, and Eric Alexander down there on the field. Our technical director, Joseph Gomez, Alejandro Iresti uh, on the commercial side, Lorenzo Lopez on a camera. Alicedes Lopez on a replay. Martin Sandoval was our ultimate director. Moises uh, Garza on a camera. Juan Huerta on a camera. Aaron Signs to my right-hand side. I'm just the voice on top of all of that. So hope you enjoyed that broadcast. Aaron, final thoughts. You know what, just amazing opportunity, uh, you know, for the Valley. And, and I got to just say that because I really felt that tonight. I really felt like the RGV was behind Brownsville Veterans Memorial and, and I do hope, right, that Corpus now, because we're representing South Texas, now as we go up the road to San Antonio, north of San Antonio area, I hope that Corpus Christi Miller fans and, and those areas as well will join together to support uh, Brownsville Veterans Memor uh, Memorial as the South Texas contingency uh, here in the semifinals ne next week. And so, you know, just a, a joy, a blessing to be a part of, uh, of history here, Joe. And, uh, you know, uh, looking forward to this opening the door for further teams to go further in the future. Well, we're going to a round five. I hope, hope you enjoyed the broadcast. That's going to do it uh, from Coach Joe Rodriguez Field, historical Sam's Memorial Stadium in Brownsville, Texas. Final score 35-28. It is Brownsville Veterans Memorial advancing with a victory tonight over Corporal Christy Miller. I'm Joe Bowling for KBSD-ITV.